Uh, so uh, we're back at it. We're in this. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, jump right in. Um, all right. Um, okay. <laughs> By the way, Sam says she'll be back in a bit. Oh, okay. So Sam's going to be joining us, All right? Yeah, I'm just uh, going to go get some water, hit the bathroom, get some noodles, and be right back. You guys can like start whenever. True. Uh, okay, sure. Um, let's jump in. And thank you all for being so kind of this hype train. Uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't um, babysit Damn. this hype train like I usually do. But uh, <laughs> um, if you can help out, that'd be great. Um, if not, okay, we'll, we'll try it again later on tonight or something. I don't know. Um, all right, here we go. <sighs> all right, stupid computer. I love your just exasperated okay. sigh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> spoon, spoon. I, I do a lot of those. If you like those, then stick around. You'll find, you'll, you'll hear a lot of those from me. <laughs> um, Doobie, so, okay. I don't think uh, Doobie's a Nazi. Well, I don't know if Doobie's a Nazi. I know Doobie is a no, quote unquote so modern authoritarian. All right. The site uh, thank you so is, much for uh, joining us. Uh, as an infested once again, channel. everyone. Uh, this is a lot of fun. But I'm going to um, go there anyway. So uh, we had a uh, big disagreement on the previous panel, um, uh, which was our all trans everything uh, panel. And now this is not all trans so <laughs> uh we're opening it up um yet uh, <laughs> yeah it's not yet, yet. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um so uh i wanted to uh, uh again just take a quick moment to reintroduce everyone um uh for youtube right basically because when i cut all this up uh, so uh, we have alice right alice hey raise your hand you're great <laughs> we got alice uh, uh we got riverboat jack river jack raise your hand you're great uh, demon mama hooray um, and then we have two people who are not currently here, who will be here soon. Uh, we have uh, um, Samantha Banana in that corner, and then we have um, uh, 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 down below. And last but not least, we have my favorite person in the world. Uh, we have Joe the Silly Serious. Uh, Joe, um, who uh, Joe. had an issue with what was being said um, previously on the panel, um, and it was like uh, fighting on the sidelines. <laughs> I'm like, I heard I'm red very aggressively in chat like when i'm typing i'm smiling i'm having a good time so i don't I, everyone's like what's the problem i'm like there is no problem we're chatting like joe joe just escalates things very quickly just like pull it pull a knife it. on you okay <laughs> the australian no, I... or, or the uh <laughs> yeah it's an australian survival, survival mechanism okay uh, yes don't don't believe her a uh, youtube audience uh because if you've never been in my Twitch chat, I uh, know Joe can be quite aggressive. No, chat Joe is, is a different it's animal. All good. I'll be um, going when you get back, Ziggy, probably. <laughs> no, it's not panel Joe. Have a good no, night, Ziggy. Oh, no, a very different person. We got a okay. lot more content uh, coming. I'm extremely happy uh, that uh, you've uh, uh, chosen night. to join us. So we were having, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I had the contours of this incorrect, but like um, uh, what sex and gender actually mean in both our language and within our society, uh, whether those things are, are real things, um, uh, either one of those things are real things or they're, they're socially constructed. Um, so yeah, uh, that's why what I, what I uh, yeah. thought I heard. No, go ahead, uh, Joe. Thank you. I just, yeah, so like, obviously for me, it's very Thank you so much, Prospect. Holy so shit, like, thank you I'm so a much. I'm a PhD and I do gender theory as like a core component of my PhD. And like the number one foundational question in my PhD is what Holy is shit. woman? literally um so it's always interesting to me because i think and so much of the conversation overlaps and that's why it slips so quickly and it's hard to like lock down right so even the idea of like um sex is something that is separate from from gender because one is socially constructed and one is biological well that is not necessarily true it's just not because this the law and science has this really interesting way of putting gender before itself and trying to create create these fictive foundations so like science likes to tell you that see, gender linky. exists ex uh, see i even mix them up because to me they're not all that different um sex uh sex is a natural thing that was simply observed and there's um it's there's nothing cultural or subjective about joe it. the it silly is, serious it that is fact it's firm fact now i'm a critical realist so i believe there are real things in the world like these are real bodies. Our bodies are very different from one another's, but I'm not sure that it fits neatly and cleanly into the binary the it way that not. it was designated by an already gendered society and gendered scientists. Like the science that was come up with to designate these categories of gender 
is cultural because there are certain people in charge and there are certain ideas that proliferate. Joe's really time. fucking smart, by the and way. And the same thing happens with the law, right? We see this idea that women exist before the law and ask the law to represent them, but it's actually the judicial power system that produces what it claims to represent. These categories are produced by the world. So science produces sex as much as it does gender. And yet it is interesting how it's always sex, gender, desire, and there is this concrete order that these things have to follow. Um, and so I, I don't necessarily, I, I didn't think anyone was wrong. I'm just like, I very much am interested in this conversation. And so are all feminists because it's probably the fundamental, like feminism needs a subject, right? So discussing what the subject is, is, an incredibly important and prevalent topic within feminism. It started as gender being something which we are. It turned into being gender is something which we learn, like Simone de Beauvoir, French existentialism. And then it got to Judith Butler in terms of gender being something which is performed. Performed meaning not a performance, but perform the same way you would perform a surgery or perform um, a, a task. Performance in terms of gender is something which we do. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I'm excited whenever people are interested in talking about this. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and Alice, I guess you kind of helped kick off this whole conversation. So I would love to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, so uh, a lot of a, a lot of what Joe was talking about is kind of what I was talking about, but I think Joe takes a little bit more philosophical viewpoint than I do. I'm not able to match her. Um, there, I am not really a very smart person. I just read a lot. So um, uh, Judith Butler and Firestone are some of the people that that I that I'm reading, um, uh, and and some of the the theories uh, posited there are kind of how I look at these things. And the reason that I brought up sex and, and gender uh, is is that uh, I see I, I agree that yeah, sex is, is sex is uh, essentially yes a, a social construct in that it's something that was not um, not objective, right? Um, sex is not necessarily pure objective. Um, like uh, some people say, like well, it's chromosomes or it's it's not though. Um, it it fit, roughly fits into a binary, but it's not really that either. Um, it's it, it's something that we, uh, you know, humans, science, we, you know, whatever we 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 ascribe to these two categories, um, uh, to to male and female. And there are some people who are outside of those categories. There are people who are intersex, um, although they generally do fit pretty well into one of the two categories. Um, so uh, first off, I'm not going to include intersex people in a discussion about trans things. I'm not going to include um, them necessarily, specifically in a conversation about sex versus gender. Louis Vuitton, it's because Joe it the Silly Serious. Look that up so. on it's YouTube. Not very polite Sorry, I can't get you the link right um, So I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, the only thing that I was bringing up, the only thing I was mentioning, is that um, uh, basically that uh, sex, which exists, uh, whether it's objective or not, whether it's a social construct or not, there is sex. Um, you know, there are male and female people. Um, uh, there are people who are affected by testosterone and people affected by estrogen and their bodies have a particular setup that's going to provide those hormones and the other things that are around that okay, sex. Okay, and gender okay. is a layer on top of that. Gender is another construct that layers on top of that. And gender means a lot of different things when we talk about gender. I disagree like, with We could this. be talking about gender and we could mean in the performative sense of performing the the you know performing being a woman perform you know in society and we could also be talking about what we feel right we could be talking about you know what we want to be seen as so there's lots of different layers to it oh, but all, they are all socially constructed but they, they for mesh smart women. together fundamentally if even i do no shame that's what my discussion was they mesh fundamentally it's hard to separate them because societally we don't have that built out yet i want to separate them i want to make it so we can ignore sex and we can ignore gender and we can just be people but right now we don't have but that. i would so, I, Alice, I would take it further and include desire as well in that enmeshment, because a lot of the time gender has historically been decided and had very strong connotations with who we desire and who we're allowed to desire. Well, oh, that's, I think that's fair. That's an interesting the, the problem so, that I have is, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. So I would just argue that, like, I, I don't actually think that this, this meshing exists at all in the way that pe most people think about it. Um, like when you're going about your day, when you're meeting people on the street, when you're talking with people and gendering them, it has nothing to do with their biological sex. Like it, it has absolutely nothing to do with it. You're not, you're not going around like feeling up and unless you're in, maybe, maybe somebody is going around feeling up somebody's crotch to see what their genitals are or taking blood samples to run a DNA test before they'll gender somebody. I don't think that this is actually as meshed as a lot of people at least in the gender gender critical movement, like to argue. Um, let me 
I just want to address that because and I want to address two things at once. Uh, Vivian in uh, chat saying very Western centric view of gender. Agreed. Gender is societally defined and I am speaking from a Western society perspective. It could be different in different societies, but it has a similar layer, right? Similar layer over some concept of sex. And the second thing is just, um, uh, uh, sorry, I wanted to address what you were, what you were bringing up, uh, uh, Jack. Um, <laughs> but I seem to have forgotten because I wanted to just address that Vivian is right in calling out this as Western centric. What did you say exactly, uh, Jack? I, I just said that like sex and gender aren't as meshed as a lot of people oh. argue it is. Um, mm. Because like on, in a tangible way, when we li we're going about living our daily lives, we are not actually knowing what one another's sex is. We're uh, instead it's going okay, through and making boy. a lot of Go assumptions based on how people We'll look be doing more fun and, stuff yeah. later. So how you want to come back later. Is not necessarily sex. Feel free. I I'll just respond, and then we'll go to uh, Joe, then Demon, okay? Yeah. Uh, those, those are heuristics. Those are the heuristics that we use to determine sex. Um, and uh, that's part of gender. So wearing a dress or something is part of gender. It's part of performing. Right, we we some people in some societies presume that someone who's wearing a dress is a woman, right? Even if they're wrong about that, that's one of the things that that we associate. But one of the other things that we associate are sexual characteristics. See you soon, Lord. Somebody who has breasts or something like that. Somebody who has facial hair. Somebody whose face is shaped a particular way. Men and women's faces, or I should say that better. Male and female face shapes are very different. They're fundamentally built differently. We have different bone structures. There's lots of things that we use heuristically to determine what sex probably is. Now, I agree with you. You're not 100% right, right? You could be wrong most, sometimes. I, I, but I most people think people they're right. Wrong. No, yeah, I don't most think people... they are. Most, most people, people are right think... because transgender people are a very most, small portion. Most people think they're right, but the reality for a lot of trans people is that cis people are wrong about a lot of things. And that's what I'm trying to make the point about, is that but, you are making assumptions, and that assumption and, is socially constructed. A 98% right. uh, correct rate of, of identification is not a really an, something we can say is an assumption. It's a uh, good heuristic. Sorry, but you can't even cite a 98% correct rate because not that many people have even been tested for what their chromosomes or what their sex is and you have to have a okay. definition of sex in the first place i'm sorry but but you're just you're just you're making you're baking in a lot and this was the thing that irritated me in the last conversations you're baking in a lot of assumptions that you know favorably uh fit your argument but those assumptions aren't necessarily true so to state my opinion on this uh, if we're talking about the the general populace of, say, America, which is what I know the most of, um, I think it is uh, quite uncontroversial, and maybe I'm wrong with this, but I think it's quite uncontroversial to say that most people um, do not know what the words gender or sex actually mean. They don't know what they mean by those words. They have They understand the word in a general sense, that in a way that fits most of their... Uh, their functional use but they don't have a definition they've never looked into what it actually is they just kind of have a vague thing and if you ask and i've ha i've done this experiment before asking people well what do you think gender is what do you think sex is they will give you sometimes a different answer in the same conversation they will define it differently in the same conversation because they are using a sort of contextual um uh what's the what's the word uh I can't think of the word right now. Like um, deductive, not not deductive. That's not the right word. They're 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 using a uh, like a like a a contextual version of of gender and sex, and they don't have they don't know what the differences are. That's functional, but that doesn't mean that we don't have useful and functional definitions of what these things are. Now, while it is true that probably at some point in history, sex and gender were perfectly interchangeable um which i don't even think that's the case because if i recall correctly the word gender comes from linguistics um referring to certain types of words in certain languages um and uh you know sex is refers very specifically to you know generally biology and the study of how you make reproduction happen but those two things are actually not really similar um they're totally different things um like uh, somebody's gender is is an identifier it's something that we that either is we can either build a society where it's impressed upon them based on certain rules or you can declare it for yourself just like a name i i, I have argued this in the past uh before that like a, a name is something that um 
the law we can make laws that force people to have a certain name but we generally agree that you should be able to determine your own name um because it's an identifier it's part of your identity it's who you are you can declare that you can declare yourself having a nickname and nobody blinks twice you can say well my name is anything i mean my name is demon mama that's what i go by nobody fucking bats an eye when i introduce introduce myself as demon mama nobody goes oh well can i see your uh, genetic code where it says the demon mama name on there no it doesn't it will not it doesn't exist as that um sex as we understand it uh is is constantly evolving we don't even have like a current um like 100 percent solid model of sex and in recent years we've discovered that there are actually numerous points on the human genome that indicate and that are used to uh to construct what we traditionally call sex which is like your physical characteristics um so i just don't think that the in i think the enmeshing is largely a result of of cultural forces in our society and that in reality if you actually look at the way that people interact nobody uses sex for anything except for your doctor maybe in very specific cases usually they use gender and a very very broad and uh, flawed version of gender at that uh, let's go to joe yeah i mean True, it's difficult not. right because i think what i'm hearing dear my mama and it's just like it, it sounds like you're saying sex and gender are very clearly different people don't use them as if they're different x means something very specific gender means something very specific but no like the meaning thing is what's getting lost on me right because i think it, a lot of the issue comes back to what jack was saying right there are two principles that exist within identity um categories you've got um the sort of normative aspect which is not what you were talking about jack which is like the relationship between sex and gender, which means that I'm born a sex and then people start gendering me as that throughout my life based on what I'm born as, based on nothing else. And then there's the evaluative, evaluative aspect of gender and sex, which is I'm looking at someone and I'm making a determination. And maybe the enmeshment isn't as strong there as it is in the normative sense of, of gender and sex, but the enmeshment isn't... I, Alice has been saying this over and over again in the chat, and I think she's saying it really well. Gender is built on top of sex. So it's not so much that the two ideas are enmeshed in a way that they constantly are cyclically relating to one another. It's that sex provides this pre, pre-social scientific foundational grounding upon which gender is then built. And it is difficult again, because this is the thing, it's a thick concept. There are so many aspects to gender because this doesn't necessarily make sense if you're talking about gender identity in terms of like, I feel a certain way. Um, it's really talking about how gender sort of operates in a, in a social setting. So my issue with sex is that ultimately in trying to, when feminists try to undercut the biologically deterministic ways of defining what it means to be a woman, they inadvertently created another socially constructed monolith that we now have to fight that encapsulates this idea of shared femininity. Um, so, and, and this is, this is actually prime. This is, relates to the conversations about incrementalism and whether we, sh we should try for radical change because when we do take those like mini steps it's like you create new monsters which then you sort of have to battle and i think accepting that sex is biologically sound and fact and objective and in some way stronger than gender is a faux pas that is not to say that sex isn't useful in a medical sense or in a descriptive sense the use of something and the truth of something are two different things well, there's two problems that happen, which is that, you know, and um, like, first of all, the first thing that happens is like we have this, uh, you know, we have this idea that like sex provides the the basis for gender, but it, it that's like an incoherent that doesn't actually play out in reality. Um, we we assign people a gender at birth and then immediately the moment that any per, you know personality arrives there's deviance instantly no person lives up to there isn't even one we don't even have a good there's there's nothing that ties those two things so the problem that I see with this is that like um, while sure uh, sex can be very very useful um, if you're a doctor trying to determine like the risk of heart conditions for a, a person in front of you the, the what, what chromosomes they have can be very valuable but we don't actually use sex for basically anything and like and and while there are probably there's probably some level of like genetic you know influence of of your sex uh 
your sex chromosomes, it seems to be that a lot more of the, the like mental and social aspects are the results of totally different biological processes that we don't even understand yet. And so I find it kind of um, like there's, there's sort of a uh, presumption of the basis of sex as like the foundation for, for gender, when in reality, gender is kind of its own thing. And I think that we should, we should be willing to separate those things. We should be willing to say, wait a second, we've been kind of doing this weird fucking shit where the second somebody's born, we start telling them things that they are going to have to do. And some of them, they just fall into happening to like and other things they don't. So I'll respond uh, yeah, quickly, I, Bill, and then we'll go to Alice, yeah. and then Red, and then Jack. Because we're weirdly disagreeing and agreeing at the same time, right? Mm. Because I agree that sex means fucking nothing at all. Like it means nothing. It doesn't, it, do, it doesn't, gender isn't based on sex in the way that sex is somehow determining what sort of gender will play out in the future. It mm. has no causative effect on gender. It's not you're born a uh, female and then that has some causative effect on you being a woman. No, not at all. I'm saying that sex is a formative fiction created by science to make us believe that there is some distinction that is clear and concrete and factually based between men and women. And it is that a priori sort of building up of this idea of um, sex upon then which gender is justified. Because if there is a biologically justified difference between mm. females and males, that automatically creates a culture that defines gender as women and men. So it's not that it has a causative effect, it's that it almost has a justificatory effect on the social mm -hmm. um, okay, and population, like normative gender. Can I, so can I just ask a question real quick? Um, for, for Joe? Oh yeah, okay, sure. Um, when it when it comes to like other societies that didn't necessarily subscribe to like the scientific method as like a philosophy, what what do you like what what is your so analysis you're of like other societies that have come to have more than two genders? You know, uh, we well, we have examples of that all across the world, right? This is the huge point, right? This is where this sort of um, uh, gender nominalism sort of came to be in that they were like, well, hang on, maybe sex isn't as factual and objective and concrete as we think it is, given that this comes from Western science and it's not true of all science and all cultures, right? So like maybe this is not as concrete as, as we think it is. So I would argue that the fact that there's been a proliferation of Western ideas of, I don't even like the term Western, but you know, for this conversation western ideas of of gender is to do with supremacy globalization colonization so of course our ideas about gender are everywhere now and of course there were other ideas about sex and gender in other cultures because science is culturally and socially constructed because it's discursive it's based on language um and so yeah it, it is completely consistent so i'm gonna go to alice um and alice uh, so alice will go to you next but alice do me a favor like uh when you want me to like uh to know you want to talk like can you like palms out because sometimes it looks like you're leaning on your head when you do this so yeah it's very helpful it's the, but, yeah. Alice. It's the blue, you it's got the it screen. um yeah all i wanted to say is like uh i guess the confusion for me is that claiming that there is not a basis on sex doesn't really explain why uh when i um when i talk like this it's a little bit of a different gendering in some situations then when I modify my voice to match better what uh, there is, uh, you know, physiologically different between uh, male and female voices. So, so I just, there's little things that we use that are heuristics that we use to determine sex. Voice is an example of them. Uh, we're actually, uh, so what we're doing when we're listening to somebody's voice and we're gendering it as, as male or female or sexing it as male or female, what we're actually doing is we're listening and we're hearing components of voice that indicate the actual um, space that there is here, the uh, pharyngeal space, uh, the space here, that we're, we're actually, um, we're listening and we're hearing the difference in resonance and voice that makes up those spaces. And yes, actually, what? I know this. Uh, because this is one of the things that I studied. Um, so I and I have studies on it if you want. Anyway, so okay, just I, th that's what confuses me is that you're claiming that sex and gender don't have anything to do with each other, but there are things, heuristics that we use all the time that we use to determine what we think someone is. This person is a man or this person is a woman. You're and describing you. like functionality. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I agree with you that we should stop this. This is bullshit. We shouldn't be assigned these things. I agree. The problem is that what I see happening instead is I see people saying, well, you can be whatever you want, but that doesn't actually work in society because we use these heuristics. So I think we need to do something else. So what, what Joe is suggesting is 
make this That's sex, just, you know, yeah. um, you know, this this like difference in sexes just not as important. Make that not as important. Um, acknowledge that this is something that's constructed and break it down. Um, that's what I want to see happen. And I'm not seeing that happen. I'm just seeing us say, everything is valid. You can do whatever you want. And society is not adjusting yet. So so let's go to uh, uh, Red. And then um, uh, Joe, you got uh, Demon. So we'll go to Demon. Right, we'll go it's, Red. It's, Sorry, what? I just want to clarify what I think might be a problem is that I think that Demon Mama is talking about normative gender and Alice is talking about evaluative gender in terms of like sex has something really to do with it. Like if you change your voice and stuff, but in terms of like sex having any um, influence on gender as something normative, which we train people into behaving in gendered ways and performing in gendered ways. No, sex isn't a predetermining causative force for why we make people perform this is just gender. Confusing. However, sex may have an influence on how we evaluate someone's gender. Red. Red so Nadine. like, the whole like um the voice thing to like oh we use it as a way to signal our sex right so sure in nature this could be like and we do this in western society right in most societies today because of just like history but like to say that it's like a, there's like a causal relationship right that there is a like objective link between the two that it signals like an objective fact right is just not true so long as it can't be universalized it's not true like in, for example, from uh, certain tribes I've talked to about like the two spirit stuff and like the history of gender in certain tribes, okay, not all tribes are it. the same, obviously, they're all different. But in a lot of them, gender wasn't like marked by your sex characteristics. It was marked by your role in the tribe. The thing you did determined your gender role, right? So like, this is why like uh, their third, fourth gender roles were characterized as embodying the roles of like a bunch of different groups of people because they didn't say you're a man because you have a penis. They say you're a man because you hunt. You're a man because you, you do certain things, right? All of these like different social roles. Um, and like, again, just because currently in society, when you have a certain voice, people make assumptions about that voice. We, people make those assumptions because they are like socially informed this is how they've been like the structure of society. You growing up, you associate these things together. Chat, but relax, if, hypothetically, okay. we had a different society where people didn't make those assumptions, then like the, the link would be completely broken. Like it, they wouldn't be objectively linked together. Right, Sex and gender in... would not have no, no, no connection. But we're not That's in great. that society. We have a physiological link right now. Male voices oh. have more resonance and female voices or lower resonance and female voices are higher. That's not even general. That's, that's, that's not even true. true. Yeah. Can it I, is, and I will so give you study. Can I, can no, I reframe no, the no, argument? No, 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 on, no, no, on, on average, right? So you're talking about averages, right? No, they, there are X, Y, X, Y is female, right? Uh, X, Y females, X. right? Who have deeper resonances, deeper voices. What do you mean? No. They literally no. exist. I've met them. Okay. Uh, okay. Like it could be. It like, could literally one, off, one person. The, one the second it's, don't it's, define it's a role. One, no, no. Yes, they do. It, when we're talking about objective links between two things, so long as there. This is why gender is a, a, a spectrum because so long as there is one person on the planet who has ambiguous genitalia, ambiguous chromosomes, ambiguous like uh, like um, uh, gametes, right? The binary is shattered. There is no longer a binary. A binary isn't one two one two one two one two one two one two three one two one two one two one two. No, binary is one two to infinity. So long as there is one difference, one person who is not in that, the binary doesn't exist. That's so it. let's go to Demon Mama, um, uh, Joe, um, and then uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feel like what what Alice is describing is like a is sort of just like stating a phenomena that occurs, um, which is true people do hear a deep voice and they assume this person is a male regardless of whether that's actually true and in fact um this they might not even know that they're assuming that they're male they just they don't have any concept of sex or gender and they go that's the one i don't want to fuck and uh, or whatever and it's like okay well that's not how we're trying you know i mean i would hope that our our uh, general understanding of these things in the name of progress would move beyond something like that the reality is that using the depth of your voice like literally i could go tomorrow and take my money uh, no no i refuse to give you time sorry i'm addressing um, you after you're done talking yeah, go for it 
um the uh the if you go and take a if i go tomorrow and i get you know laser uh laser voice uh shaving tracheal shave whatever i can't remember the name of the surgery uh there i will have a throat that resembles and re and creates the exact um pitch as anybody else but that would not make people assuming that i'm fe like that i'm you know xx female correct they would be wrong they would be reading my gender expression and making wrong assumptions about biological sex that doesn't matter this is why this becomes incoherent this is why i'm saying it's an incoherent structure so we should we should divorce these concepts why would we continue using a, a flawed system like that we don't need to have these these things together if somebody you know the way that i look at it is gender is a is a is a very very complex incredibly messy historically varied uh way of exp of identifying ourselves to others so that people can identify a part of who we are sex is not that and really hasn't been unless you go back to like unless you go like all the way back to like when humans like just evolved and even then there's probably ar arguments against this we so yeah we don't i mean i don't even know if animals really use sex they use like like weird uh, signals. Well, they don't because they don't yeah. have language. They don't, know, they don't know what it is. They can't even acknowledge hey, it. It's not hey, a concept. Hey, hey, ants them. can vomit so... chemicals into each other's mouths. Yeah, yeah, there okay? you go. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, like, I think it's very silly to tie um, to, like, you're going to be okay over there? You're going to be okay? Just let me... Re no, I'm going to drop from this panel because I really don't want to play this game okay. of one... Okay, you, you, you should know, drop from person. this panel because it seems like if you can't handle, Ooh. like, the conversation, then you should roll out. Okay, so, so let let's... me let me, let me me respond to you at least. So you're being, pre you're being prescriptive about so this, and I'm being descriptive about it. You're saying what should be. I'm saying what is now, first off. The second thing is you're not listening to me when I'm talking about voice. So um, this is something that I have a lot of experience in, and I'm one of maybe 10 or 15 people that have my level of experience. So I'm going to show you something. Ready? Um, we're going to play the game of voice and what their differences in voice are. So first, we're going to drop my pitch. So I'm going to just <sighs> drop my pitch, and I'm going to keep my pitch low, and I sound kind of weird now. Now I've just dropped my pitch, and my resonance is very, very high, very bright. I sound weird. And then I'm going to drop my resonance as well. And then I start sounding like this. Is this and then like, I'm going to the bring is, my the resonance happening? back up. And I'm going to leave my pitch the same. We, we know the difference between resonance and pitch. Yeah, this no, is you like, don't, what is this? No We're all trans. We know the difference between resonance because, and pitch. Because no, you don't. Because do Demon, you even, Mama just, like, do you Demon, Mama just called, Demon Mama just called out a voice as being deeper. Um, talking about pitch, but I'm talking about resonance. My voice is it's the a same. It's oh colloquial. boy, pedantry it's, from it's the Calliopian not, it, Club. It, it Here we go. Be, yes, it needs to be. Pe it ne I need pedantry because you're 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 making a claim but about it's been clarified. voices. You're making a claim about right. voice pitch being related, and I'm making a claim about voice resonance being related. Okay. Resonance so tomorrow link, I get both of them pitch. fixed. It doesn't change there the argument. You're literally female. just arguing Wait, about a go. meaningless detail in order there to try and get a point. There are females who are born with voices of lower no. resonance. No, there's not. What do we know? So wait, hold on a second. Wait, wait, I got the answer. No, wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me answer why. Please. Let me answer why. The male Vo vocal tracks are affected by testosterone. That can causes a 20% increase in volume, um, and it causes a thickening of vocal folds. That is this what is testosterone does. Heard. If you are affected by testosterone, then you will have a voice that has the properties of a vocal tract that is 20% more volume and thicker, 20% thicker vocal folds. That is what happens to testosterone affected voices. Not that all until females. until until not next year. Females, nope. not all until next year when I go same way. Until next year when I go get my screen printed uh new throat that I have surgically implanted and I have a literally grown from a vat uh quote unquote uh essentially female neck that has essentially female resonance and tone. Yes, you're correct. Uh, until then, there will probably be some distinguishable difference. But guess what? The moment that that there isn't a limitation on that, there will be a. I will suddenly have implanted a brand new neck that gives me a voice that's just oh, it's perfectly untouched by by uh, by testosterone. And guess what? People will do the same exact thing that I just talked about, meaning that your point was completely a waste of everyone's time. Um, and yeah, I agree. I have no interest being here prime with this person, so I'm gonna drop. Thank you for Bye. letting me have the space a little bit, but I have no interest in talking to this group. So other than actually uh, everyone except for Demon Mama is cool. Fine. So have a good night. Bye. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, it, I, you, like this is literally by virtue of like, it doesn't, you don't even need data for this. A single anecdote falsifies the claim 
that females can't develop low resonance voices because guess what? Some females who are XY, who just like are slightly different because their body has different sensitivities, doesn't get exposure to as much estrogen and has like androgen stuff where like they have exposure to testosterone. They're still female. They got ovaries. They have gametes, right? They 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 uh, uh they got a clitoris, right? They got a pussy, right? Everything, right? Like, uh, but they have low resonance voice. This is like a ridiculous claim. That I is agree. like, why would you ever defend something like this? So let's go to uh, Joe then Jack. Yeah, Rachel, I think that's really interesting because I think part of the issue here is that even having that discussion, uh, like I, and saying that one case disproves it, it sort of legitimizes this scientific base of sex, right? And I think that what maybe that's like uh, just being matter. charitable, like what Alice was trying to say, is that like maybe there is one or two cases, sure, but in terms of our social understanding of sex and the things that are associated with sex, like a lower voice which is not, a, I mean, it's associated with gender because the two things have a relationship, but like it is associated like hormones, yeah, breasts, it's a signal. uterus. Yeah. yeah, it's a signal of sex more than it is gender that people, when they're using gender in an evaluative sense, use sex sex descriptors like a low voice. So maybe there is one, one person, there are lots of women who don't have uteruses. There are lots of women who have hormonal differences. There are lots of women who have no breasts. So even though they don't have the, the same sex descriptors, they're still considered female in terms of sex. And I think what Alice maybe was trying to say is that these female attributes are used when we try to evaluate gender. So when we're looking to prescribe someone a gender, often sex um, characteristics come into that. And predominantly a sex character, and this is the thing about um, categories don't work by having a system of like criteria that's met. You just have these weird ideas that are associated. So like the category of female, one of the ideas that might be central to that is the idea that a female has a high voice and a male has a low voice. And these are sex, not gender. And so even though there can be outliers, of course, all categories have fuzzy boundaries. It's, it's looking for these things in order to ascribe gender. And I think what Alice is trying to say is sex and gender have a relationship because we look for sex characteristics when we're trying to evaluate well, gender. Yeah, but nobody was disagreeing well, with that so general claim. It's like, but there's, there's, there's implications that were made both in her original argument and going in here. And there was a ridiculous amount of, of, of condescension. I wasn't the only one being a condescending bitch and I was being a condescending bitch. I do acknowledge that, but that's okay. It wasn't a one-way street here. Uh, let's just be real about that, okay? Um, but the... the the problem was that, like, I again, like, I agree with you. I wouldn't have had the problem with her statement if she didn't universalize it, right? Well, I literally so the... said, I've met someone who is female. They're not trans. They are cis as fuck. They are cis woman, right? And they have a low resonance voice. Mm -hmm. And they just said, no. Right, it's ridiculous. Problem, so, right? No, no, wait, hold on. Hold on, I You're, want to comment I, on I that. Really I really want to talk. Hey, right. I okay, haven't talked ahead. in go a ahead. long time. All right. So the issue wasn't what a whole bunch of these issues are 100% on on point. The the biggest issue though was that a, like she she was trying to describe our our current society like in the United States and the reality is even in our current time around the world there are different societies that have different like criteria for what is like biological sex, what is uh, gender, how how gender is performed in their different societies. And so like, it, it just kind of, if the idea is at the bottom that sex and gender should be conflated um, because our current society does that, I, I'm kind of, I, I don't understand where that was coming from or rather if that's the way it is, I, I don't I don't get where like that that benefits us if we're just saying well this is how it is. Well, well then we can oh, we can yeah. change it by having conversations like this like that. But Jack, I completely agree. But you can't change it. This is and of course I'm going to say this. I'm an analytic philosopher, so this is my whole career, right? Yeah. You cannot do ameliorative change unless you have a really clear idea of the ground, right? So descriptive work is important because it tells you how things are and you need to know how things are if you plan on changing, changing them. You need to have a clear idea of your start point. And you're totally correct. This is an issue, right? Sex is not scientific in that it is universal. Categories aren't universal ever. Categories are normative, which means there is a normative force to them, which means, yes, there will be outliers. Of course, there will be outliers. What we're trying to look at is the prototype. What characteristics 
sit close to the middle that we use to sort of build that category around and sort people into that category. So we have a prototype, an ideal version of what something is, a man or a woman or a female and a male. I think it's funny. I actually think Demon Mama, you and I agree, but have different solutions. You say we should separate sex and gender entirely. I go, they're unintelligible in terms of distinguishing them from one another. The distinction is unintelligible. So like, sure. just, but I, I know that you think it's like biological, but I'm like, cool. Biological no, I mean, I don't really, I don't really different. think there is a single one, like one size fits all solution. I just, I, there was, yeah. there's, you know, been a lot in this conversation that were just obviously like false claims with the, which b by the way, there's a little bit of context that is missing. This spread, this spreaded off, this whole off spin came from playing defense for gender criticals, which is like, whoa, okay. So wait a minute. What's the actual argument being made here and making a statement like people don't know what gender is and people who hear a deep voice will assume that you're ex is like, okay, yeah, we recognize that. How do we, what do we move to make this better? And I, and I will say that while I understand that like the goal sometimes with definitions is to be prototypical, um, the reality is that mm, there are many categories that will not ever have that. I would be willing to argue, and in fact, I, I don't know. I don't think there's ever any way, maybe maybe I'm just uh, totally off base here, but I would be willing to bet that every single biological female on the planet has at least one non-standard sex trait that we would be... And so if that's oh, yeah, the case, no, the then there isn't isn't even, there's, you can't even generate it. And attempting to generate the perfect prototype of a, of a sex is ridiculous. And so... I think that the reason why I Pretty generally are, too. yeah, it's very eugenics. -y. Yes, there's there's it, there are problems to trying to build these like there are in, inherent conclusions that come from these types of uh, of structures that can be built. And one of the things that bothers me is that um, or sorry, I should say one of the reasons why I advocate for like at least in our general discourse here in America, separating sex and gender is because, you know what, if you want to talk about chromosomes, go talk about that with your doctor and everybody else can worry about your gender, which is where you respectfully uh, don't assume people's gender just because you hear one thing that's weird. Or, you know, if you see somebody with long hair, you girl, girl, girl. And then they go, whoa, sorry, dude. And you're like, whoa, okay, maybe we shouldn't make these assumptions. We should treat gender as a matter of as a as a part of our identity which can be self-declared and that we shouldn't go around making these random assumptions about people because there's not actually a need to we don't actually need to do that from time to time uh or like uh, ever there's almost no yeah. circumstance mm -hmm. i can think of where you need to make those assumptions well and and part of part of what was bothering me earlier and i i, I wanted to bring this up before alice left was just like well then how how do we talk about trans people who haven't been on hormones yet trans people who you know like Ha haven't had any surgery thank yet. you so much you know, dizzy like, eyes. It, this entire issue to me it just really makes it clear that like sex and gender need to be different things or at the very least to the level that they're connected i'm i'm not sure i'm not sure what level they would need to be connected in like a better society um and well, make, also, Joe, maybe you yeah. have an idea since you are have a phd are getting a phd in this stuff like i <laughs> i'm i'm not a smart person I like things in simple, plain language, and I haven't sure. done a lot of, like, theoretical reading on this stuff. So I'm just like, what? Honestly, the least smart people are people who enroll in PhDs. It's honestly <laughs> the most ridiculous thing you could ever decide to do. Um, no, what to me, it's back to this thing, right, of normative versus evaluative. Sex at the moment plays a role in how we evaluate people's gender. When we look at people, we look at sex characteristics as part of a much larger thing in terms of like what sort of things they're doing, how they're dressing. Sex, cate 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 sex characteristics are one of the things that we look at when trying to determine gender. That's should just we be doing the that? Though? Layer the right. Layer that's now. that's no, what I'm we shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. But okay. And I know that's what you're trying to say, but we can't stop doing that unless we first address the normative part, which is when a child is born with female sex organs we immediately start gendering them as a woman or as a man and it's it's trying to for me there is no difference it the sex doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything but so, it does mean because, a lot socially said, is the thing i and i and I, I get what you're saying i get what you're saying but like okay like there i feel like there's a lot of parallels that could be drawn to other similar situations i just think that we should move away from that why do we why do we impress so much shit 
on other people why do we do that and i don't think you need to have listen like the, the fact that we're having this conversation right now proves that you do not need to have like a rock solid uh like universally agreed upon definition of gender in order to have a better functioning society i think that we can just say hey everybody stop making so many fucking assumptions about gender when you're when you're like talking about sex and you aren't even talking about sex you're just being dishonest because you want to repress people like we should i feel like it's like it, it frustrates me i i like to cut through the bullshit of that i don't think we should be slapping uh pronouns on kids who haven't even been able to ex explore themselves we have neutral pronouns for that reason we have all kinds of clothes let children you know if you want to dress your kid up in whatever color go for it but don't do it because you're trying to like you're like trying you, your baby comes out and has a has a fucking penis and so you're like all right time to get the fucking axe and the and the gun and the bomb and the beat your wife or whatever other bullshit that you want to fucking put onto that child because they have a penis what a stupid way of running things and it just makes me mad when i hear people playing defense but when they're really just observing something that already happens which we all universally acknowledge isn't perfect and i I know I, you're not doing that part, but that's what I feel was happening in this conversation. One of the things I here, here's an idea: what is sex actually useful to us at all? Um, like, is, isn't isn't talking about like it's useful to chrom doctors, yeah, isn't to it more extent. useful to talk about chromosomes or like your your hormone levels or like something like that? Like, no one's I I don't remember the last time anyone talked to me about sex outside of like a. A doctor's hospital, like a, a doctor's hospital. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a no, hospital, it was a, it was a mechanics know? hospital. Mechanics hospital. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, um, it, and that's interesting. Like, uh, Go ahead. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious though, because uh, the what's 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 screaming to me right now are all the uh, fucking like dozens of times we've talked about the trans and sports debate. Like that's like that's what's happening right now in my head. Mm -hmm. Um, like people are, are yelling oh, no, in chat. Yeah. Like, oh no! Like. <laughs> Like, the, well, there was differences of people who, who have these normative groups of, <laughs> that normative group of male and that normative group of female, right? Um, in terms of uh, performance and all that, and is there not a uh, a reason why we would sort them um, so that like uh, we don't have like we had a, a mixed gender um, uh, uh, sports and then it was just all men within on the uh, on the pedestal, right? Like, like would that be fail? Be fair to, to everyone. Like, well, trans women are women, right? Uh, I, all I gotta say is, if you're losing to trans women, just you know, sissies, just get good, right? Just pff, deal with it. I don't know what the fuck. No, 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 no. I mean, like, like sorry, cis men, cis men, right? Like cis men. It's uh, if, cis men versus cis women. Like, if it was just cis uh, men on the uh, pedestal, if there was like a mixed race, like a foot race, right? Then would that be fair? Would like, doesn't that isn't that not one use, one use of sex to society but uh yeah demon mama but, yeah no, oh and yeah. Then demon mama no, go ahead go ahead Joe. No, 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 go demon Joe. okay i have two things that i can talk I about with this say... <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry i think i think there's some <laughs> lag joe 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 no no demon mama go oh my god all right whatever i think there's lag demon mama. i think there was Please. some lag Please. is what happened yes. um, <laughs> uh so uh no i i have two ways of look of looking at this first of all i do think that there are values to quote unquote sex um whether and i think it's most useful as a shorthand for um like chromosomes basically and there is a there is a there is value to that for example um if you are you know born xy you have a, a genetic predisposition to certain types of conditions that other people may not have most likely you have a very high likelihood of that so that is useful that can be useful um and i also think though that it's important that we acknowledge that it isn't a binary because there's a fuckload of people in fact people who are in my very own life who are intersex and as it turns out if you live in a world where it's assumed that just because you have a dick that you are going to have certain problems well then you're at a bunch of conditions that could be unique to you and are and have been well documented because as it turns out medicine is pretty awesome but it gets limited by a lot of social things um then you would you would be in trouble you could be in trouble i mean for example a great example is Kleinfelter's incredibly common um intersex condition that has a a heavy predisposition towards um uh weak artery walls if you don't know that because it was assumed that you are just xy and not xxy well that could be really a huge problem in your life and actually there's a huge 
I happen to know this because if you get if you figure it out early, there's a lot that you can do to extend your life. So that's one area where I do think sex is useful and divorcing it from implications of gender would be very valuable to us um, because it could be like, hey, everybody gets a karyotype test. And then you are, you know, if you have certain uh, certain limitations or, or certain risks or whatever, there you go. And it's only used for medical purposes. That'd be great. I don't know if we can do that, but maybe. Then there's the the sports conversation. And uh, I really think that, like, most of the problems that people talk about with regard to the sports debate are non-existent issues. First of all, for uh, it's always fixated on trans kids. Um, and usually they haven't even – they're on puberty blockers. There's nobody's body changes have even happened yet. And – High school sports, when you even get into high school sports where people do have that change, it's uneven as fuck as it currently exists. Dude, you know, dudes who haven't even started puberty yet are going in and getting in a sport and they're going up against like the, the you know, the kid who happened to start puberty three years earlier and just bodies the fuck out of him. Like these things are already uneven. The reason why we have like high school sports isn't to have some perfect idea of perfect um, competition. It's to build a culture of showing up to practice on time teamwork uh a little bit of challenge you know some achievement but it's for social value and then when you want to go up to the top levels of olympic sports guess what olympic sports already have fair standards that we've been using for 10 years and nobody cares about so it's just a, the sports thing is a non-issue it's mostly invented to create a well, like a, a what but, if. well but well that's... demon mama i take the opposite position i think all players should have their shins cut off until they're all five foot six mm -hmm. Okay, that's the only way we can ensure uh, fair competition, all right? So, well, so this, is, this is always my um, response when people say trans women on average are taller, right? So my immediate response is, okay, if a cis woman is 6'3", should they not be able to compete? And obviously they'll say, oh, yeah, they should. And I go, okay, why? Well, they're, 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 they're female, right? They're a woman. Okay, but like you listed that trait as the reason, right? Just being a, a sex, right? isn't like a trait in and of itself that should be disqualifying isn't there it's literally what comes a... about because of being that sex right so if the if you wouldn't disqualify like a cis person for that trait the, the only reason you're disqualifying this trans person for that trait is because you just don't recognize them as the gender it's so that's just close, transphobia so that's so. closer to what i actually was trying to discuss um because um i i and my, the confusion is, is because of, of myself, because um, I said trans and sports, right? Um, but what I was actually trying to address was Joe um, and talking about like these groups, right? Like these uh, normative groups um, and uh, whether they mean anything. Um, and so like, if we put the trans issue aside for just a second, um, like if it was just cis men and cis women, right? Like the re like we would sort these people out for a certain reason. Now, um, according to, um, um, According to Red Charlotte, right? Um, uh, I think she makes a really good point. Like, okay, well, there could be tall cis women, right? Um, that uh, there could be cis women with more testosterone, um, like we saw with that one athlete, right? Um, and so that could be a reason why we, we'd still not um, uh, to abolish uh, these gender divides in terms of uh, sports. Maybe just uh, do it on another another uh, axis, right? Um, but yeah, that's what I was trying to refer to. Us, um, but Joe, uh, you want yeah. to say something? Then we'll go to Jack. I was just going to say, uh, I think, well, I'm not a gender abolitionist, but I think it's useful as an exercise in that if we didn't have gender, how would we sort sport? It might still be based on physical characteristics. It might be based on grouping people in a physical way, but that wouldn't necessarily align with gender. My, who knows how it would be based? I was a competitive martial artist for 13 years. I fought boys. We fought in weight classes. So um, that was never, it was, and that's a combat sport. It was never like, oh, boys are strong. No, she so didn't. She them, didn't Billy Drilko. You know, that was the other girls. person. It was never like that. So I, I think it's interesting just forcing yourself to imagine alternatives. I think when it comes to sex as a useful category, just quickly again. It's okay. I, as a researcher, create categories all the time. Uh, but their use is only within the framework of my research and other researchers working on similar topics. It doesn't need to be socially everywhere for everyone to use as a phrase. Like, and that's my thing with sex. I think sex is useful in terms of medical research and creating a ground for medical diagnosis. When you're, when you're first looking at someone who's coming to you with symptoms of something, you still need to go much further because gender is so broad. Every human being doesn't fit into two sexes. See, I use, I use them interchangeably. They don't mean anything different to me. Um, but like you go to the doctor and like you present as a female, but 
that gives them a, a clue what might be happening. They still need to look at your hormone levels. They still need to look at all types of things to determine what might be wrong with you. So I think it is useful to an extent within a specialized area. Uh, but for me, I'm not a gender abolitionist because I, I don't believe, I think within a judicial system, you shouldn't get rid of people's ability to be represented. Um, but I think that gender should completely become an area of play and that no one should take it seriously and that you do what you want. You do what you want and you feel it and it's useful when it's useful, but you create, you try and take all the meaning out of it by playing with it. Um, you, because so, at the moment, so much meaning is put on it. Are you so an, 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 an aspiring gender abolitionist? Like if we've reached a certain point in society, then it would be useful. Like we got rid of- It need to be a non-traditional society. And I yeah. don't think that's going to happen. So, but you don't, okay. So you don't think that's even a possibility. Okay. All right. Um, and also, also just like a non-academic point, like, look at me. I'm someone who has a lot of fun with gender. I like the concept. I don't think that they should, um, in any way, um, dictate what I do with my life or how smart I'm considered or what I'm expected to do or anything like that. But I like being able to play with femininity. And that's what I associate with gender. And I like being able to play with masculinity too. I think we just because something isn't being used correctly now doesn't mean that you need to blow it out of the water. Like it can, well, I mean, I think that's a, I think familiar. that's a massive straw man of the, yeah. of the abolitionist position, but all right. Jack. Oh no, yeah. I, I know. I know. I'm, and I have like technical reasons. And as I said, that's not my academic reason. That's just like a fun mm. reason that I, I enjoy gender. And I think there can be some positives in it. I'm here to Jack. blow up your gender. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I, got, I, I can't, I can't wait for the gender wars. That That's, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm always prepping. Um, the, uh, uh, the thing about with like, tra because I, again, conservatives focus on, predominantly like teenagers when it comes to like high school sports um that's why we have this rash of bills going around and like i don't know i i feel like it just would be a total non-issue at every single level if we just got trans kids the the treatment that they need to be he healthy and happy like i i feel like generally it's a pretty big non-issue the only part where i i feel like we run into a lot of problems in a gendered society is when um we're t we're trying to talk about non-binary people and to to joe's boy point i would love a society where we have a different way of classifying sporting events other than gender or sex i i, I think that's a weird way for us to differentiate sporting events Let, let's just ha let's figure out a different better way okay it's pretty unfair too like i think there are fairer standards by which you could measure Per, uh, athletic performance uh, and also something you know there's a couple of things i want to touch on here but first off with the the, the sports thing like people seriously for, so first of all the reason why it, we all like the reason why it's always fixated on teens is because teens are an easy target they're the kids you can make panic about it that's why that has Think nothing about the children they can't vote. yeah it, it's it's already like again again like i said high school sports are already ridiculously unfair and completely ridiculous like in so many ridiculous ways so it's, it's nothing about that it's just that you know children can't defend themselves easily they're easily manipulatable and like always uh, right wingers love to take advantage of people who they can exploit because it's part no, of the No, but there's that one argument that people keep pushing now is that oh, you're taking scholarship opportunities away then from, the from way the, the girls scholarships or whatever. Yeah, like it's okay, <laughs> just make a fairer scholarship then. Yeah, Jesus good, fucking Christ. Um, like, but but yeah, it is ridiculous and like. Uh, so that part is, but I, I want to point out that like people make this big stink about sports. Sports are already fucking unfair. How many times have you heard like your relatives arguing? Oh, it's just because it was raining. You know, they, it's not fair. They went to a different environment. All oh, the air was too cold and the balls got too small and there was shriveling on the football and the pigskin and blah, blah, blah. like, it's so stupid. Everybody comes up with a reason why everything's unfair. It is unfair. You could get a snowstorm in the middle of your game in the middle of a fucking championship game. And they're not going to cancel it. If it's football, they might for baseball because they cancel for anything in baseball but or if they do sports a regular whatever sports are unfair. Is unfair it's just just admit it it's like it's not always fair and you have to come o overcome the unfair random things it's just like fucking playing cards but uh, uh sorry the one last thing i i, I wanted to to touch on here is like um you, you, with regard i i just want to i want to represent the the gender abolitionist position a little bit no offense but that was like super that was like like almost like almost do, almost prager you level well. like the gender abolitionists are coming to blow up your femininity no the point of gem gender oh. abolitionism is not to literally get rid of gender it's the idea that it shouldn't be something that is um politically 
or uh, societally particularly important. If somebody wants to be wants to identify with a woman, fine. If they want to be super feminine and do that shit, that's awesome. It's a part of it's about moving gender to a position of expression and not a position of political dominance, which is what it is currently in our society, very much so. Yeah. And when I was pushing back against that, it really, I, I knew the second that I started saying it that I was not being um, good faith in terms of how it's being presented <laughs> in this conversation because I was talking very specifically about uh, metaphysical arguments that happen within academia hey. about gender abolition, not the general sort of Welcome. political movements. But once I started speaking, Welcome, I was like, it is we got a lot of fun coming up. Coming out. <laughs> um, yeah. Welcome. Mm, I didn't mean to. I just, so... Can I just say one thing, Please. Prime, on the mm. thing about um, the trans uh, men are taking young girls' scholarships? Please, um, come to demonmama.com. It's just like VGG, and you'll have a lot of fun. Come on in. Space, right? because come on in. Come over to demonmama.com. Seriously, you'll have a great time. They are transitioning simply to get a scholarship. Um, and that's just not the case. People would never do that, change their entire lives just to get come a scholarship. So... Um, I would reject that argument Demon and call people out for being like transphobic because it's- You mean trans women whoa, are taking uh, whoa, cis jo women's- uh, Joe, are, uh, are you saying I didn't transition solely so I could see what's going on in the women's bathroom? Yeah, I I find that so weird. I would, I, I'm surprised. It's this not actually all that interesting. <laughs> You've been in the women's bathroom, it's actually not really interesting at all. Uh, Sometimes there are chairs in well, there. That's pretty yeah, cool. Actually, yeah, you guys do get like couches and shit, like which really fucking annoys. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> but then, but then again, if Sometimes. Was, I guess if there was a couch within a men's bathroom, I would not actually sit on it. So there's that. Um, yeah. But, no, don't. Uh, but sorry, did you want to say something about Charlotte? Um, because I, I feel like I, I kind of like strung oh, this I'm, I'm, I didn't mean good. to do that. Stephen Bennell the second. I see you. I know you're watching. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh is he? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, thank you. Uh, I, I didn't want to um, shrink this because I felt like I, I did when so I bring in the sports debate. But like, I thought like uh, what Alice had been bringing in, she had bring up, bring up a lot of things, right? Um, Our and, friends um, over at DGG. Like, and Joe was kind enough to like write some of her, her arguments down. Um, so uh, hopefully we can maybe uh, deal, uh, uh, tackle them and um, maybe make some progress. Unfortunately, Alice is in here, but uh, maybe we can still um, do something here. Like, um, uh, like what exactly makes Sorry. someone transgender, right? And what is is it different from a person, a woman, who um, like like we said before, like doesn't have uh, is a cis woman who who uh, deviates from like the from, from the average, from the norm, right? Like what makes someone actually transgender is that different from like a cis woman who has like a lot of testosterone or whatever? Like right? what's the what's the actual difference? Oh, I mean, well. If DGG is watching, they might get mad, and they probably already know my take on this. But uh, hello, everyone. Hello, my vicious enemies. No. Um, but uh, I, they're, I they're I all kid. the way back when Alice was in here, so they're not, oh, they're they're catching up. up. They're I not see. live. So. I see. Well, it's all good. They'll get it when they get here. Um, and uh, no, I, I I on this particular thing, uh, I tend to take a pretty uh, sim simple path. I think that a trans person is just somebody who identifies differently than the you know gender they were assigned at birth and that's because we assign genders at birth which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion we should probably stop doing that um and it might mean that in the future being trans will have a different meaning or maybe not a be a relevant term and i would be okay with that um i would be okay if in the future there isn't like a uh like a a trans community because everyone is free to express themselves that we don't need to have like a like a, a separate thing there's always these like cultural elements that that i love about being trans um and there's things i don't like as well there's a lot of pr like pains and suffering those things are still going to exist they just don't have to be codified in the same way because the way that it's codified right now uh can be pretty harmful but the way that i look at it right now is i just think trans people are people who identify differently than the gender than that they were assigned at birth and i tend to think this is a pretty good model um obviously there are some certain types of conversations where perhaps that envisioning doesn't work entirely um i think some people tend to get up in arms about um like oh is somebody trans before they knew they were trans to me that is a like a, a very mm, masturbatory question uh it doesn't really mean anything it doesn't matter whether they were or they weren't what matters is that they are now uh there were certainly things that were gender deviances that i you know took as hints that hey maybe transition is the right choice for me but it, those might not be the case for other people and 
if and if that's the case, that's fine. I don't see that that being like invalidating or anything like that. Let's go to uh, Jack and then Metrally. Okay. Um. So the the only like what makes somebody trans like yeah i i think that we get fitted into True depending on like our obvious characteristics at birth we get fitted into the social construct of sex and then as we grow older people like you kind of like learn about your gender how you identify what you gravitate towards and you decide that you want to be you know what what you want to be and most people are comfortable with what they were assigned at birth and so they just stick with that um by chance and i i think that the people who are uncomfortable with what they were assigned you know they're they're trans folks and to demon mama's point i think it would be totally cool if we lived in a society where you know uh, you know transgender people were just like yo i'm not comfortable with my body so i'm just uh you know getting some medical treatment for that and everyone was like cool awesome right that's great. And then you just get medical treatment for that, and it's a non-issue. I, I would like that a lot. Um, so. Um, Retro, do you still want to go or not? Uh, no, I, I was just saying hi to Alice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sure. Hi. Okay. Um, Alice, uh, thanks for rejoining us. Um, is there something you wanted to uh, say? Um, yeah. Sorry for the rage quit. No, I'm not really past that. I'm not, just, I'm not in a mood to fight, you know, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know not fight um so uh happy to talk on what makes someone trans but i can't talk to what makes other people trans just why i you know okay sure well, what, what do you think what makes someone trans i have no idea what makes other people trans other than they say they are but um for me it was it was primarily the drive was um gender dysphoria um primarily mine is focused on sexual characteristics um i would have rejected the gendered things expectations regardless um, sexual characteristics are why I took hormones and, and things like that. Um, and I don't really identify all that well with women. I don't identify all that well with man because I don't think either of them are very helpful for me. So I get ascribed trans woman. You know, I get ascribed woman in society. So I kind of accept it most of the time because it's easier. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, to, to comment again on the, on the sort of idea of a, of a, uh, a post trans future oh shit that's going to be clipped out of context but no a a a future where we don't really need a term like trans like i mean i don't know i think it would be pretty fucking pog if like i had never been forced into it and i was you know pretty traumatically forced into a lot of roles when i was younger um which resulted in a conclusion that i am this thing that we call trans but i mean if i had lived my life there is very it's very likely that i still would have had dysphoria based on you know uh t hormones but again like like uh, i think it was jack who said um like it, it could just be a medical issue like hey this is like an issue i'm struggling with can we you know ha can i please have a different uh puberty which was actually a huge thing for me by the way in my in my personal experience uh, uh, and that was i didn't even i did literally didn't even have the words to describe what it was so i existed in a world kind of like this but one that had uh things pressed on me i didn't know i grew up super super christian so i didn't have any idea of what trans was but i have distinct years of memories of like learning about puberty and going i want that one what i hope i don't get this one i want that one and um, I don't know why that is. Maybe there will never be an answer uh, as to what that is. I don't know that we even know enough about like consciousness to figure out exactly why these things happen. All I know is that it was a part of it, and I wanted that thing, and it stuck with me for mo all my life until I finally made the change, and now it's gone. So, hey, there we go. Um, I would love a world where people can just do that and not be judged, where... I mean, I mean, even God, like, again, this is this even goes to like cis people when I talk about gender, like presumably cis people or people who are comfortable identifying as cis, but nonetheless feel restricted in their expression. Maybe they don't want to go as far as I do. Maybe they don't want HRT or anything like that. Maybe they, you know, whatever. But there are a lot of people who are uh, restricted by our current understanding of gender, by the way that we approach gender and gender expression. I know a lot of, of uh, people who are comfortable um, identifying as cis men who would really love to wear very different clothing than they currently wear, but they're terrified of it. And I mean that terrified. Um, and I feel like that's a grim state of affairs. Um, and I would like us to move, you know, towards a world that maybe we don't even need to have terms like this anymore. Maybe people can just express freely and we don't need to have an idea of trans because everybody will 
you know, everybody will express their gender as they see fit on any day, you know? So the funny, um, yeah. I just want to say the funniest thing is, uh, Demon Mama, you and I, I think you're a gender abolitionist, sounds like. So am I. We have the same position. You guys should both be things. disagreeing with me. You should mm -hmm. be teaming up and disagreeing with me, not fighting with each other. Don't worry, I'm coming know. for it... I'm coming for that gender. I'm gonna bomb it to high <laughs> heavens. Yeah, it, it, fuck I you. Think, I, I think a lot of gender abolitionists aren't under the impression that we're going to achieve like the elimination of gender in like the next generation or even two or three like it's something we're like we're probably going to be like weird cyborg robot people around the time we eliminate gender oh well i would um, hope that by the time we start getting into transhumanism we will at least have figured out gender because oh my god transhuman is going to bring a lot more questions right um yeah just yeah. When, when you can be like a giant mechanical spider uh with like five dildos for legs look it, it's going to be weird okay um but uh true <laughs> So, yeah, for for me, like I my like how I, you know, I think maybe maybe that is a better way to talk about, uh, you know, being trans is like, dr like, diving into our anecdotal experiences. But like my story is very similar to yours, Demon Mama. Um, like I grew up very Christian, and like I literally didn't know the words for transgender until I was in college, yep. and the only exposure I'd had to trans people was from like daytime TV. Uh, so if you know may maybe some of you out there aren't familiar with daytime tv and like trans representation on it but uh basically trans representation uh in media was on daytime television is basically jerry springer where like uh cross dressers and trans people are just kind of combined into the same thing and laughed at as they beat each other up over some cheating man um, or you have uh, Maori who would occasionally do shows where like, and this is real, this is real, it sounds weird and not true, but it's real, they would have entire episodes where basically they would just get a bunch of models to come on the show in model different outfits, and, but like half of them would be trans and the audience would try and guess who was trans and who was cis. Um, and so growing up, like I felt a lot of like feelings like, oh man, I oh I I'm I'm having a beard come in. I don't know why, but this is making me sob uncontrollably for like three days. Um, or like oh man, I'd really like to wear a dress, but I know that that's a girl thing, and I'm a boy. I I guess I can't do that, but I I I do it anyway. I have this weird compulsion to do it, and I can't explain why. I don't have the vocabulary to explain to you why I want to do these things. And then I got into college, and like started realizing oh trans people can just be like normal people well, that's pretty cool i guess but I, I mean like i'm not one of them like i watched you know i've seen those maury shows I'm, I'm not like that and then like i like realized that hey i have all this stuff i've been stuffing down into a box for you know the past decade i guess i'll t start taking that out see what see what's out there and uh then uh i basically realized in like 2016 oh oh shit oh oh fuck Oh no. A lot of trans people, when they realize that they're trans, will literally do anything and everything possible to avoid having to be trans. That was me. That was me. I was just like, uh, well, I'm I I'm not trans. This is this is just a weird fetish, and I can just never tell anybody about it. Or okay, maybe maybe it's not a fetish, but maybe Plus, maybe I'm uh, gender Joe, fluid and I can serious. just take this secret to my grave. And then uh, then I remember this very clearly. A very close friend of mine committed suicide in 2018, and I, I was named in his suicide note. And essentially, a lot of the reasons that drove him to suicide resonated with me because I had this huge thing in my life that I wasn't talking about with anybody. And if I kept holding that inside, I was going to be going the same way. And so literally it was the realization that if I didn't transition, I was going to die. Uh, that made me transition. And I think that that's a, what a lot of trans people get to in our society because we intuitively understand, even from a very young age, how rough it is for trans people. Um, okay. So, uh, oh, thank you for spent, uh, for uh, sharing those really powerful stories. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to expand on, like, like Joe, you want to say something? 
Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think, like, the real benefit in these stories as well is that, like, words do things, right? So the reason you have language is because you want to do something with it. And I think in this case, Can I a message from the, this guy? Talk what it is soon. to be trans is to have that sort of, some sort of shared experience or some sort yep, of shared doctor. need for advocacy and representation under a judicial system. So like, it doesn't need to be something that's concrete or here forever. It doesn't need to force any behaviors onto people who identify as trans, but it is necessary and useful to give people the language to talk about their experiences and to be able to advocate for change um, in relation to their experiences because of the fact that they are trans. Um, go ahead. Uh... Do you mom? Yeah, and and on that idea, like I I this is why I generally support the broadening of this language and allowing people to explore these concepts without uh judgment. I think that there are I I and this is totally I mean, I'm sure there's some, you know, data-based evidence on this, but a lot of this is just my own uh reading of personal life and my experiences, but I I believe there are probably quite a lot of people who have similar but perhaps less intense feelings to ones like myself and Jack have had in our lives um, who would be better, happier, well, more well, like more mentally well people if our society didn't make the the uh, the pain of, of, of gender expression so ridiculous. Um, like I, mine was enough that it pushed me to go over, to go over all of the, and I've been through a lot, a lot. And a lot of people have been, um, but I bet there's a lot of people where if that bar was lower, they would make the moves. They would take those things and they would live a happier life for it. They would live a more true life for it. And I hope we can get to that. Um, my concern with the, um, and I, I do realize, I, I do agree with you, by the way, that it's important for us to be able to have these terms um, to talk about it. But I think there are even better terms than the ones that we're using now. And that's why I tend to be pretty open to people coming up with new terminology, even if some of them I think are kind of a miss. You know, I think some of the people have, you know, the memed flags, a million different flags for a thousand different sexualities or whatever. I think some of them probably aren't super helpful for a lot of people. But in there, there are probably terminology or, or ways of conceptualizing these things that will revolutionize how people um, how people interact with these things. And I will say that though we have a long way to go, uh, my experiences remembering the internet 10 years ago versus the internet now is that the average person that you encounter on the internet, there's still a lot of transphobia, but there's a whole lot less than there used to be. And people actually, like, I can't believe that it's relatively, and I'm not trying to like say we're doing real good. We got a lot fucking longer to go, so don't get any ideas. Don't get comfy. Um, but the fact that there's like, that it's normalized on Twitch panels to go on and like put your pronouns in your whereby descriptor, like what the fuck? That literally would never have happened 10 years ago. Not anywhere. There wouldn't have been a single place that did that. And it's happening. It's not everywhere. But it's happening. So I think that these sort of like concepts can be super, super rapidly um, valuable to a lot of people and people will resonate with them and they will be adopted simply because it helps those people who may have previously thought, oh, well, I'm either cis or I'm trans. Well, maybe we have different terms in the future that will be, oh, I'm this thing. Wow, cool. Now I'm open to all these ideas and blah, blah, blah. Yes. In, in the future, we're all going to have our bionic eyes and we'll have our, our, our tags, right? And everyone in their like visual like thing, they'll see everyone's pronouns, right? So it can be in, uh, thousands of pronouns in society. You won't have to remember them all because it's going to be right in front of you. Oh, gosh. So... Save us those little awkward interactions. That would be lovely. <sighs> So uh, on what you what you were just saying, um, Tifa Mama, right? You were saying that like um, uh, we can uh, come up with these the new categories. Right? Even those categories aren't so helpful. Um, but like, um, so we currently have categories, right? And those mm -hmm. are like socially constructed, right? Mm -hmm. Those tend to be bad words, right? It's socially constructed. Um, why is that a bad thing? That something is socially constructed. Like, what does that actually mean? And like, can it be po can it be possible that we could socially construct something worse right so we can try to rearrange our, our categories here right because humans like to categorize things yeah um so we can try to rearrange them and humans then have still to categorize things we don't have to but we do yes, we do I mean, we do yes. we have to categorize I, mean, I do think i, I do agree function. in general yeah um yeah. but like I, I think that as a product of language i do tend to agree but i'm not a super big brain linguist or anything like that i'm just a, a 
dumb shit who's lived for a while. Uh, Guys, you're smart. Can you all please stop saying you're not intelligent? Oh, I know I'm smart, but but no. but listen, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a different type of smart. I'm like a smart look, street look, rat or something. Look, Joe, if I'm so smart, you should just give me your PhD, okay? <laughs> so yeah, sign it over. That's and, how it works. And you then you will prove you were smarter because then you didn't bother <laughs> doing any of the work, but you got the uh, you got the reward any which way. So there you go. Exactly, exactly. But, exactly. But, well, well uh, to answer the question um, that you had asked about. Uh, these things i don't think like i i think that the um like hatred and fear of socially constructed things is largely a sort of, well i mean i think it's a product of like here in america especially american just anti-social just anti-social tendencies we have we don't value other people um like in america a lot of people are just kind of like uh yeah hell is other people and and they have a very misanthropic view a very highly individualistic view um i don't think there's anything wrong with socially constructed things all things are in the end at the end of the day socially constructed we only can use language and our observations to understand the world and that's okay that doesn't mean that everything is meaningless that that like obviously there is value in having ver you know definitions and categories of varying levels of strictness but we should be careful about what types of categories we use strictly and what which, which types of categories we don't use strictly for example it's probably very good for us to have extremely stringent standards for what pure water is right uh, we don't want to drink poison. So it's really useful for us to have a really, really strict definition of what pure water is so that it doesn't kill us. Um, but it's not really super important for us to have a super, super stringent, highly rigid um, definition of what gender is or what a woman is. Those things are not very helpful. And in fact, they can make life worse for a lot of people. So that's the thing. I just think we need to be more... Um, like we need to understand like that there are different types of social constructs that have different purposes. And I think part of that is just a matter of people becoming, you know, a little bit more literate about how language is used, a little bit more informed about the world around them, meeting people that are different than them. I think that that will, you know, have a lot of a positive value, I would hope. Um, okay, so uh, I want I want to go to uh... I want to go to Joe because uh, I, I disagree with some of what uh, uh, Demon uh, Mama said here, right? Um, and it pains me to do that, Demon Mama. What you've been doing that, um, but I, I do. You're disagree right. With it's going to pain you. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go to. The gender I'll go to words Joe. are coming. I'll go to Joe first, and then maybe uh, if Joe doesn't address what I was thinking of, then I'll, I'll state my. I think. Go ahead, Joe. She's She's in oh, oh, I thought you were going to ask me. Okay. Um, no. Uh, so I agree on some bits. Mostly, I agree. I think people, okay, I don't know how to give you my answer. I just know how to give you a answer. So an answer to the question about why we hate social, socially constructed as a term. Mm -hmm. um, I think people love the idea of truth and this idea of being able to ground things in the objective. And so the idea of something not being um, objectively oh, true is cool. and observable and graspable is very frightening to people um and they somehow uh, so nietzsche talks about this in genealogy uh not in genealogy in uh good and evil i don't remember its full name um and he talks about how um uh things that are viewed as like true are viewed as morally good or morally superior and i think that is still true of today things that are viewed he actually says it in a really sexist way he says what is what if the truth is a woman um and he's <laughs> implying that women are irrational and um hard to observe and lie and so he's saying like what if the truth isn't this like firm thing that you believe it is what if it's actually more like a woman and it's about like appearance and superficiality and that sort of thing like what does that mean for the world? And so I think uh, this is why we hate socially constructed things. True, We're afraid cottage, cottage of the world lefty. just being appearance. We're afraid of things not having any concrete meaning. And this relates back to this language of production and this idea that everything has to have an end result. So this is a postmodern answer to your question um, about why we hate socially constructed things. We view them as morally inferior because they're not um, objectively true. Um, and then in regards to like how we use language, true, that's the only thing I disagree girl, with. True. And I think this is just a preference thing. Like for me, it's about using language less literally. It's about viewing the power of language to have fun and to use words in like clever ways. Thank you so gives much. Them a multi like multi a multiplicity of meanings, um, which uh, destabilizes the ground on which we actually understand things and forces us to be more curious and investigate the stimuli that we're looking at independently. Because 
you can't get away from categorization. Our brain needs it to function. We have a cognitive economy. We cannot look at every single individual thing and take it at face value. That's not how our brains work. But what you can do is after someone categorizes you, you can play with that concept in a way that makes them, that demands attention and demands investigation and demands a, a further, more independent and uh, uh, like more direct inquiry. That, uh, that aren't thought terminating, right? Um, that basically- we like, it's very The only thing when, we're not terminating. No terminating gender, no terminating anything, no <laughs> termination. Exactly. Well, hopefully we can terminate things like genocide, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. The, 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 I mean, obviously, but no. Okay. Uh, no, I just wanted to say though, I, I think, I think you could probably, we can probably find agreement, Joe, on the idea that like, um, there are like, we can categorize, uh, categorizations. And I think that there are categories that are valuable to be strict, right? Like, again, like I said, with the pure water thing, chemistry, it's actually pretty good for us to have certain st relatively strict definitions in certain circumstances, not always, not universally, but there are certain things where it's very helpful for us to be able to have rigid definitions, but there are other things which which are not that case, right? Um, like, I, I don't know that it would be useful for us to have, like, um, like I don't know, oxygen uh, have, like, 15 different meanings in a scientific circumstance. It would probably be better to have different words for that. Um, but, yeah, yeah but... Um, or, or even different categories for that sort of thing. But there are definitely circumstances where I would agree with you. I think that um, for multi, like highly multifaceted or um, uh, abstract concepts, it's really good for us to have multiple ways of describing things, like super valuable because it allows us to understand different pieces of a truth that might be too hard to digest in one single word or one single phrase. Uh, so like I mostly agree with the like why people uh, are like, with um, what you said about why people are afraid of the concept of social I probably constructs, shouldn't right? Fire, but, but also, like, I think someday. a big part of it is people don't understand, like, they 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 sort of misunderstand what a social construct even is because they what they think in their head is if you say something, if you declare that something is a social construct, yeah, you're like you're declaring it is not real, right? But like that's like nobody who calls things social constructs are saying that this thing doesn't exist and doesn't interact with social life and daily life and reality right but right. like every time i've explained this to someone like normal people not discord people right they're like oh okay like that makes sense right like when you say social construct it's like oh it's not like like a, a chair exists maybe right? someday neuron fire but like we'll see. the concept of a chair doesn't exist in nature right but chairs still exist right and like oh okay that makes sense um so like because they feel extremely invalidated when you say like something they believe in is like, w they essentially just hear that you're calling it fake and dumb. No, 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 right? no, no, no nuts. Which so, like isn't really true. Go, go ahead. No, no, sorry, please go ahead, Jack. Um, so I was I I, I was just gonna say like it, to Joe's point too. I think a lot of people get scared that the universe and the world is really really big and could possibly be like more or less than it appears they want to be able to understand something um quickly intuitively and i i think that the reality of our situation as beings that exist in this universe is far more complicated than that like even just looking at like a, the chair example charlotte just gave like you look at a chair you're like okay this is fairly True. straightforward thank you, you guys start getting down to, and we got more content work? after this as and well. then you start learning oh well it takes I'm going long you know, tonight it exerts gravity it exerts like a pull on the universe you start breaking it down oh it's made out of different chemicals and sub substances and structures and then you break it down even further you're like oh uh, molecules cool atoms what are those okay you keep breaking it down and breaking it down and then you're like wait wait a minute like night 90%, 99% of this chair, like, just is empty space. What the fuck? Like, you, you start breaking it down until it's both useless and scary. Um, and I think that there is possibly, like, that when you can uh, you can apply that to social constructs, too. It gets real Yay, scary you, when you start day. breaking down an entire social construct this. with nothing Stream ain't dead. that allows you to understand it in a larger Stream way. Stream ain't dead. Refresh. And a lot of it is is fabricated which makes it weird when you have been 
raised up in a society that tells you that it is fixed and solid and real. Yeah, so so I think um, Jack, because it's as popular as po I'm guessing it's me and how I phrased it, um, which like You're I feel good, like Copioid. my You're all question good. wasn't quite Can answered in the way I, I, I was looking um, because uh, what Jack is alluding to is that like there was a large portion of society who loved damn these, uh, words of high price constructs praise. right thank you like who who except these constructs, right? Like you can tell them it's socially created, right? Like our ideas of gender or ideas of race, right? Um, but they have a use for them and they like being able to put people in these things, right? But on the left, specifically on the left, um, we we have a, a, a fear, like the, the uh, not even a fear, but like it's more that um, uh, we, we have a mission of breaking these things down, right? The, the farther left you go, the more things you wanna break down, right? So yes, some people are wanting to uh, break down um, these concepts of gender. Some people want to uh, break down um, uh, concepts of race, right? Like, um, and other things that I'm not thinking of right now. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, like in, in those spaces, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to dismantle these things, right? But in the end, in the end, um, it's very possible that the best that we could do is actually recategorize things. Like put people in different, uh, maybe more uh, fair uh, uh, categories. Okay, I, I'd love to hear from you, Joe. But maybe different, more more fair categories. But like, um, because people have a, a, a need to do these things, a need to put people within some sort of bucket, right? Um, uh, like, isn't it possible that if we do uh, begin to recategorize them, right? Uh, if we do create something that's more equitable, um, then can we just repeat the uh, mistakes of the past? Go ahead, Joe. You really want to turn my head off that. <laughs> no, I don't. I just, I need to work on being less expressive. Um, no, no my issue is that, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't even know what my issue is. Um, I think that uh, you're all language theorists now. Um, I think the whole world is made up of language and ultimately you could argue that everything is socially constructed. Now to be uh, fucking annoying and just focus on what I know, right? Um, Wittgenstein talks about the difference between like knowledge and certainty and certainty are things that you found your like they create the foundation for your entire worldview. So when you're trying to convince someone about to change their mind about something of which they are certain, it's very different to changing their mind about something of which they have knowledge of. Because with knowledge, you can win with argument. You can persuade them with facts and and compelling argumentation with certainty it looks more like religious conversion so when you're telling someone that everything in their world that they believe is true is like uh con socially constructed which they take to mean like we're all sitting uh, around they going, haven't wanted hmm, to speak I wonder, Neko. I wonder what we Neko, should they say haven't wanted to what you're actually they have saying a right is, to like, they can pop in they have using language we've created definition and meaning and an understanding of how we use these terms in context that's all that socially constructed means um but you're going to have a hard time convincing people uh, that everything is socially constructed because that is a huge change of worldview for most people. I, and I don't like the mixing of categories. I don't understand. I don't know why you would, you wouldn't sort people into different categories. You would change concepts. It's a bit of a chicken and an egg. It's unclear whether categories come before concepts or concepts come before categories, but you wouldn't just expand the category. Categories already have fuzzy edges. You would need to ameliorate. What, the what, what are your definitions it's of categories? Conceptual engineering, which is actually very bad. Could you, could you, what are your uh, definitions <laughs> of categories and concepts then maybe? Um, She's an Aussie, yeah. Yeah. Category Check. is a, a group of people with, uh, that are viewed to share some sort of characteristics. And Yo, a concept thank you, Hippie Punk. I appreciate uh, the that. The grammar and rules we put around that concept, how they act in context, how we're allowed to use the word. So if you asked me how I was feeling and I said, I'm feeling um, computer, you would be a bit confused at first because there are unspoken rules about how I can use that sort of language. And so like, for instance, with pronouns, when people were first adjusting to pronouns, even in uh, academic work, when her started being used as like a default, people would react very strongly and emotionally to it because they registered it as nonsense, not as um, wrong, just as nonsense. It didn't make sense. It didn't follow the grammatical rules about how we use language in that context. Um, sure. Uh, uh, did you have your hand up, Alice? I want to make sure I, I, I skipped you. Yeah, uh, Joe kind of covered what I was going to say. I was just like, this is what my original argument was like the, mm -hmm. that, you know, we have something now, we need to change it. We need to acknowledge what we have now and how to change it rather than say, just, you know, prescribe something different without acknowledging what we have now. And conceptual engineering is a totally different bag of like shit that you do not want to get into. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Demon? Yeah, I mean, I I guess uh, I feel like there's a, 
a couple of potential different conversations that are happening um i i don't really agree with the idea that the left is all about like deconstructing things i think that deconstruction is sometimes a necessary part of building something better um there are probably certain structures that will have to be deconstructed in order for us to make any progress but i think there's a lot that will just simply continue to grow that have already we are in the fledgling stages of those con of the i don't know if concepts are the right word maybe that's a maybe i'm stepping on a linguistic uh, thingamajigger, but landmine. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe some nerd shit. I don't know. Fucking. <laughs> uh, but, but there are uh, political ideas. There are ca categorizations. There are um, these things that we take for granted now that we make assumptions about the way that we categorize people. I personally, when it comes to politics, I think we should be much um, less rigid with the way that we categorize people, because uh, I think that 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 our desire to categorize people rigidly often comes um out of a desire to be able to dominate and uh, exert supremacy over them um so i tend to think that we should uh recognize that like humans aren't as uh like clean as we like to think that they are um that like our categorizations are very are likely very flawed um for example race uh for example gender for example um yeah, hell even sex all these things we've talked about i think we should we should um, be open to reforming these pretty significantly um, if it's going to provide us a lot of um, value. Um, and it, I, I tend to think that it would in most of these cases. Um, but I do think there are some categorizations that will always exist. But I mean, surely we can acknowledge there are better ways of categorizing things. I mean, um, we've, we've done this in, I mean, God, there's thousands of times. Uh, how long did we exist in a world where the best way to find out how way to contact somebody was to look them up in a giant wasteful yellow book that would be delivered to you every month and you would have to search and now we just are like uh fuck what's my friend's what's my friend's phone number swip 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 okay cool we got a new way of categorizing this and it's got everybody's stuff it's their name card instead of a phone book there, there's all kinds of different changes that we make to the ways that we categorize it and, and organize our lives and we should embrace that mm. okay uh so uh, uh since we have two uh um gender abolitionists do, 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 is there anything you want to say to uh joe or anyone else the other two unbelievable of you no i mean no I mean, you're here right um it, it's oh, he's not... trying to get me to fight i yes all the time every time every day yes um but blood sports something... panel blood sports panel <laughs> um, i mean i have a question so joe um, do you, do you, when you think gender abolition, do you think that we're going to stop you from dressing how you are now? Like, do we think that you're going to stop? No, like, no. okay. So, so I guess I don't understand no. what's your main contention. My contention generally with gender abolition is exactly what the problem for majority of this panel has been, is that gender abolitionists are doing without knowing, which is fine in most cases, particularly in terms of uh, advocacy, but in terms of, um, if you're trying to abolish a concept, but you can't tell me what that concept is, um, the the arguments for gender abolition are all rooted, like in terms of academically, are rooted in extremely different um, extremely different definitions of what a woman is or what gender is. And I'm talking specifically, like a lot of my work is feminist work, so I look more at gender abolition through the lens of abolishing the concept of woman. But if you have a completely different idea of what gender is. And you're all trying to abolish, like, what are you trying to abolish? You're asking me, do I think it's about abolishing femininity? No, but I've read six or seven or eight postmodern accounts of what gender is and why we should abolish it. So tell me so, what you would like to abolish. So can I tell you that I'm going to go for what Firestone does? You know, can tell I go me, for tell me, tell me. But, No, I'm saying, can I, can I pick a, can I pick a feminist thinker, thinker? Does that, does, does picking some sort of common point help you? when I say that I want um, to... I mean, it, it, it would help me if I necessarily agree with that conceptualization of gender. And I think if you're mounting an entire movement and you're trying to abolish this key concept, which is used within a judicial system to gain representation, then that better be a conceptualization that most people agree with. Right, because right. If, you, if you abolish something based on one concept, but the rest of the world has a different conceptualization of gender, then what are you actually doing? 
Well, right now they have an incoherent conceptualization and they don't even know what they're talking about. And we write these laws that are nonsensical. It, like Correct. it's horrible. Uh, wh- I think I'm just going to change uh like I'm just going to change the terminology I use now to make it more badass. I'm not going to be a gender abolitionist anymore. I'm going to be a gender ascensionist. There you go. That's my new term. I'm yeah. I'm coining it right now and, and that's TM you owe me 25 cents if you ever use it because it's going to be badass. I tell you this is the movement that's taking the world by storm. And what I mean is that we need to fucking move beyond this shit ass definition of gender that we have right now and i think that there is a better model which is that we acknowledge but what is that definition demon mama wait what is the definition that we use right now definition what is the definition you're talking about it is a in it's an incoherent in literally impossible to the description of the definition but what is the definition wait what is the definite there isn't a single one we have a hodgepodge and the hodgepodge is the definition i'm trying to i'm trying to abolish the hodgepodge what definition are you using? What definition do I de- well, use? I, oh, I mean, if I was to write out like a formal, like philosophical, I mean, I'm not a formalist, you know, like do formal logic bullshit. But the general, the uh, the process that I've used, the the document that I have is that gender is a form of identification. Uh, identification can be self determined. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, so, quick, 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 quick question. So before before we do this, just at random. Um, uh, it looks like uh, uh, Destiny wants to join this, right? And I said this is not like an all-trans uh, thing. So, um, but I'm gonna ask the panel. If you don't want that to happen, um, that's okay. Bring him in. Uh, I, oh, De- I will Destiny say no. is an agender legend, right? I will okay? say no. You're okay, uh, Alice. Alice. A- a- everyone has to be okay. I don't want. Here it comes. Okay, go. Bring on. Bring in the killer. Somebody agenda. ping the server. Okay. All right. Um, ping the server, yeah, everybody. Let's bring him in. Okay, but you can uh, respond ping the to server. anything you want. Uh, somebody, Joe, Gina, uh, somebody, to, uh, somebody ping the server. Yeah, I was just going to say, I definitely understand that as your personal working definition of gender. I think there's a slight complication in that. What are you identifying as? Like, I understand that someone is, I, it's a bit of like, when I, because like, I, I have heard this argument before and I've written it out and it automatically becomes a tautology in that you can't identify as something without knowing what that thing is, if you make, I, I no, I understand, like, honestly, oh, I, I, would I went encourage around you. and around and around. Uh, listen, trust me, I, I promise you that, uh, oh, hi, Destiny. Um, yeah, uh, I promise you, uh, with that context being perfect, yeah, I've gone around and around and around on this topic. In fact, I've been challenged by a number of people on this. I don't think that it's like uh, any sort of like, well, other terms have been used. I, don't, I even think I was wrong to identify it as a, as a tautology. I think it's very possible linguistically. Um, the statement that like, uh, oh God, here we go. We're going to start it over again. But the idea that a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman is a perfectly valid definition. Um, and uh, you can take it up with the link. I'm, I'm, I completely understand it's a, like a, a definition that might work for you, but in no, terms it's not. Of, like, it's not about. It's not about it working for me. It's not. A, it it's doesn't. not logically flawed. I've had. It's I've gone over this like fifteen yeah. times. Yeah. So, um, Joe, take over while you're yelling at um, um, Dima. I'll be right back. I just need to go to the bathroom, I'm but not... I'll get back. No, Joe, um... Joe I, I, I have a solution here. Okay, let's let's just embrace uh gender piratry okay all of us we can be gender pirates sailing the wide seas of life together doing whatever the fuck we want and then it'll be fine we'll just be pirates it'll be cool we can hang out we can like walk gangplanks or whatever the fuck pirates do um it'll be a great time yeah no i agree i just i all i'm saying is is like when you say you identify as a woman what is a woman yeah, what does that it's mean something yeah that you a identify woman as yeah no no a what? woman a woman is a uh is a identifier you are allowed to identify with many different identifiers and what a woman means to you so a symbol what yeah exactly that's exactly what but it a symbol is it's a symbol represents a concept yeah so but the symbol, symbol represents, represents a concept, concept that changes constantly that is conte- that is inherently that's, contextual that's true of all concepts though. yes yes you're getting okay. you're getting to it yes wait here i just have a, i just have a, such a quick i'm so curious about this topic yes. do you think that anybody could identify as anything no, well, I mean, I think they probably could, but I don't think it would be very useful for them to do so. And I'm talking so, about building a useful definition. Sure. So when somebody, so do we have a lot of people in society that identify as chairs? Oh, here we go. 
Uh, this is this is the type of thing that I like. I think is like this is like literal trolling. A chair. Now a chair is an incredibly. First of all, we all know that the meme about. If chairs, you want, I can just walk you to the end of like my line uh, of question. No, no, I don't really. Like, oh yeah. Well, because yeah, yeah. if if the question upsets you, I can I mean, just walk you. you no, no. If you ask me, if you ask me a question and then you are like, Haha, it's gonna be my yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, go for well, it. No, no. I literally just didn't. If you were, if it was just a, you know, if it was just a, you like a hypothetical thing, you wanted to come in and be like, hey, you want me to answer that question for you, laddie? Demon. Demon. Okay, so I literally. Like, I'm, oh. I'm offering to just go to the end of this like dialogue tree so that it doesn't sure, feel like I'm trying it. to set up a gotcha. Yeah. Go, for I'm just go for it. So, Jump down to the end of the dialogue gonna... tree for us. Okay, so my question would be is could anybody identify as a chair? Now, obviously, I think most people in here would say no, obviously not. And the reason why is because even if chair is just some arbitrary category or whatever, it represents some like underlying concept. Now, there are many different types of chairs. They are two chairs of different colors. Some have three legs, some have four legs. But broadly speaking, we kind of sort of have this category of chair that we understand uh, means a certain thing. And for a person to say, oh, well, I am a chair, like doesn't really make much sense. Like not every concept can just be anything. Otherwise, no concept would be anything, right? Like they have to have some sort of content right. within the concept for it to be meaningful. So it just seems weird to say that like, Anybody could just say, I am a woman, and then we pretend that like that concept is devoid of all meaning because it might have changed a little bit throughout history. Like, for instance, the definition of an automobile or a car has changed throughout history, but that just because something changes isn't an argument that it doesn't exist or it doesn't mean anything. But no, but I never I, have made the argument that it doesn't exist or that it doesn't mean anything. I but just that's exactly that, what you said earlier. No, so Joe what asked I, a question, and you responded. You said, well, yeah, but this this uh, definition is fluid, and it changes, and, and it means a lot of different things. It's a hot yeah, spot it's, it's things. particularly like, yeah, it be, It's particularly nuanced if you look at the history of gender and the way that we use these words again like i said before at the beginning of this conversation which i understand you may have missed um is that that gender as it currently exists is an absolute hodgepodge that most people don't even know what it means and so, so what the problem I think when you is, say no things, what i think is you... hold on well, i was talking i know you're you're in the excited but um the what what i think is that when we're talking about womanhood that womanhood is incredibly incredibly difficult to try and define and most definitions that you try to use for womanhood are not actually going to do a very good job at capturing all women and anyway we probably i'm not done i know i'm not done but we probably shouldn't try to make some sort of rigid definition for woman because we recognize that it is not only highly contextual, it changes from country to country, it changes from time to time. This is this is much more than something like a chair, which is an object that we identify for the purpose of like sitting in or selling. Uh, woman, we're not trying to identify. Uh, I mean, hopefully we've moved on past the idea of like of selling, buying, and selling women. Um, but we have this as a, as a this is a term that exists to help us identify and express ourselves. And therefore, I think that we should use a definition that allows people to self-identify that way. And that is very helpful, in my opinion. That is a very useful okay. way. And it, it, it irons out a lot of the problems of other definitions that are highly exclusive, for example. How do you, how do you deal with the fact that if you say woman, 98% of people in the world instantaneously have a coherent concept of what that means? I don't think they have a coherent concept. I don't think you have the evidence to claim that. You, cl you claim that. Lots of people claim that, but it's just a feeling. I would love to see you actually do that. We can look at references to women in pop culture or media across yeah, a variety of Yeah, and guess what? They're going to vary. What people think of when they think of a woman is is massive. And guess what? Some people will see someone who they think isn't a woman and might be a woman by a whole bunch of different standards. We have somebody see somebody and they aren't a woman because they might get like a different like part of gender expression or a social cue incorrect doesn't necessarily invalidate the entire class. Though. How can you make somebody that argument if you do not even know what you would define as a woman? This is the I same mean, problem. I can give you like broad definition. Or sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, this is once again the evaluative, evaluative versus normative thing, right? So like the ability to evaluate whether or not someone is a woman is not the same as a normative concept of womanhood. But I think if you're saying, what you're saying there is that we don't need to know the concept of woman to be able to use it uh, in, pragma in pragmatic ways, but that's not aligned to your definition. So that's Linda Zarelli's argument of doing without knowing, which is gender normalism. Gender doesn't represent anything concrete, but we can use it. But that is not saying that if you identify as a woman, that makes you a woman. That is saying that I act in collective with other women. Unless, unless we decide, which is, I mean, I, I, I assume that everyone came here not just to state things that are v like vaguely true based on our understanding of the world, but that we are here to advocate for things. I advocate Good. for a definition of womanhood that is much, much broader than our current one because our current one is incoherent. Nobody knows really what they mean when they say that. They impress so their own assumptions. It will make it more coherent. Yes, 
in this case, yes, absolutely. There are there are all kinds of things where broader definitions are more coherent. For example, but given that it's a normative concept, it will always exclude. So how is broadening it, broadening the understanding? Are you broadening who is included in the category? Are you broadening? What are you broadening? What? I'm sorry, I don't well, understand. Are you broadening sense. the definition? What? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're asking. Here, or... Let me, let me, let me give you this. We largely agree as a society that you wait, can't... no, 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 wait. Make her respond to that question. No, that was a well, I am question. trying to respond to the question. I think that Joe. Can... You just said you didn't understand it. Now you want to talk more. No, no, I'm trying to. The I'm again. trying to. Okay, okay fine. Uh, go ahead. Just, uh, do you want you, to do what Destiny's broadening... asked you to do? Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> just, I didn't. I didn't state it clearly, so it was actually my fault. Are you broadening the category that the concept is represented by? Are you broadening who falls under the concept? Or are you broadening the definitions associated with the concept that help, like what associated rules exist with the concept? So who is included or what rules are associated with the concept? What are you broadening? I mean, I, I think that we should, that I'm, I'm like, I'm aiming to change the way that we use the term woman. That's the way that I would describe it. Okay, I, so I, the rules. Yeah, yeah the, the rules by which I don't think that we should, in general, uh, use identifiers like and I, I used I, I will say this again and I think this is a perfectly coherent argument and I don't really get why people get mad at this but uh, if they do I, I'm more than happy to explain we don't tell other people what their name is though we do have rules for what a name is we do have rules for like things like legal name for example which can be useful in certain concepts and usually is much more strict than what we go for by name however we don't tell people what their name is we don't tell people who they are or what they are in general now there are some limitations like for example uh we might have for the sake of medicine say hey you uh have uh, celiac disease or something like that and or you're celiac or whatever but we usually don't do that we usually are, are uh we don't impress these things on other people i don't think that i think that the way that we use gender right now is largely um not it has no reference to the individual um and i think that's yeah, bad Right, and I would this argue that, that we should person. use a definition of gender that allows for people to self-define, and it will not only reduce all kinds of societal issues, um, but it also will help us to come to a deeper understanding of what gender even is in our society, of what we mean when we talk about gender. And so the definition I put uh, that I advocate for for gender is that gender should be seen as and treated as an identifier that can be self-declared and usually based on somebody's own internal calculus for why they come to that conclusion and we don't have to tell them no because there's no value in telling them no now I would, just, I would say th there's li there's literally no value in this new thing you're creating like, no there this absolutely might as well just is value. like there is not no no by definition there is no value no like, you're that's saying not that true anybody Yes, it is true. You're saying that anybody can claim to have some internal feeling, and that feeling is unique to them. That means it doesn't mean anything. Like no, it going just by means your that definition, it may be too broad. one of two things. Excuse me, can I please my shot? No. So going by your definition, like two different things could happen. Either one, every single person on the planet could say, "Oh, I'm a woman," in which case your category is totally worthless. Like, well, what does it matter? Like, if everybody identifies as a woman, like, like People nobody can might do that anyway. Though. Two, People can do that right me, now. Please let me finish talking. I know that you're excited. Please let me finish talking. Or oh, two, one, the original. secondary thing is. Prime, are you just going to let her cut me no, off? Like, no, that's no, incredibly no. rude. Okay. Or the second thing is everybody on the planet could identify as their own unique gender, in which case it's basically just become what I said earlier. It's like a fourth name. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think the comparison to name is valid. A name isn't created to be, like, the reason why the comparison works is because a name is created to literally be an individual identifier. It's supposed to identify an individual. Gender is a category that's supposed to encompass multiple individuals. They're two totally disanalogous things. You can shake your head as much as you want, but no, it's because absolutely true. So, no, but it's okay. not true. So are you, it's not true. Hold on, hold on, are you, are you, Destiny, are you done? Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Right. Great. Talking. Fine. Uh, D mom is fine. But we got to get some other people sure, in. Sure, sure. That's that. fine. Um, so I, I have to hit I'm the restroom Alice, for a second after this. But yeah. Alice, Jack, and Joe as well. Okay. Yeah. So um, when it comes to like, there are, are all kinds of like, we actually already have this. We have people with many names, and names are. Um, longer or shorter depending on your culture there are a lot of people named john smith in america it doesn't exactly do a super good job of identifying an individual because guess what it's contextual names are contextual you have to know oh it's the john smith that lives here there's all kinds of extra information that you need i think it's perfectly rational to treat uh gender as functionally uh, a name uh, if, if you want to call it a fourth name it's a name that talks about something different that talks about your expression and your relationship to a a whole bunch of different things that we that are so broad that we have a really hard time trying to boil that down now uh is it possible that there's other 
terms that you could use sure we could maybe just invent a new term but i think that the way that we use gender right now is not very particularly useful and causes a lot of harm to people um and i think that we would be better off seeing it as an identifier that can be declared and just real quick because i want to address that 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 this like suddenly forgotten point of comparing it to like attack helicopters or chairs or whatever the reason why we don't generally agree that it's like cool for somebody to just declare themselves a chair is because a chair is an object that we use to identify for a purpose like we try to say hey guess chair what it's not an object a chair is a category a particular chair is an object okay. a category of chairs uh, universal okay yes that you uh, if you maybe there's a it's like a woman a, can be like an object but the category so, of woman is uh, not okay a, yeah okay. i mean that's yeah. a pet that pen tree is whatever the the fact it's not that tree it's fundamental oh, okay to whatever <laughs> You, you're, okay. You're, all right. All right. So, uh, all right. Now we've all interrupted each other. Great. All right. Now we're even now. Okay. Hooray. But can I can I just finish my thought? Like we, we the reason why we don't usually think that it's legitimate for someone to call like be like I am an attack helicopter is because you can look at that and go okay well here's what an attack helicopter actually is. It's useful for us to have a rigid definition and what i'm arguing is that it is not useful for us to have a rigid definition of womanhood it isn't useful for us in fact it can cause a lot of harm because the moment because when you try to build a super rigid um definition that is not contextual that is not uh or that is you know not increasingly contextual obviously all things are all languages by its nature contextual but to different degrees uh if you have too rigid of a definition you actually can start to to have some serious issues as we see we acknowledge this nobody here i don't think is like a is like a trans denialist that there are huge issues that come from forcing people into specific gender roles that are associated with gender i think we all here will acknowledge that gender is pretty fucking strict in our society and that has some pretty major problems with it if that's the Wait, case how can it be both strict and undefined at the same time there are all kinds of. In I said it was incoherent, not undefined. Oh, I mean, I do think that. I do think that. Um. Okay. Okay. So hold on. All right. Uh, this is another thing. All right. That's happening. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did. All right. And I, I see your hands. Don't worry. I'm going to get to you. Um. But <laughs> um, I'll give you another choice. So it looks like uh, Bosch wants to join us as well. So again, um, only if the panelists here want. Oh so, boy. And it has to be sure. unanimous. Yes. Okay? Yes. I need to go yes. to the bathroom, but yes, bring him in. Okay. Fucking sure. Go. Sure. Let's go. Destiny. Let's throw the gasoline you, on the fire. Don't ask me. My, I literally just joined, so I'll leave it to the other people. Okay. All right, Joe. All right. All right. While we're while we're waiting. All right, Destiny. All right. Food take. All right. Okay. Now I'm gonna defend myself. All right. Do you uh, think that having food being subsidized is a fine idea for a policy? Maybe. Like, Why are you asking me questions? Question. Wait, this is your chance for all of you to say what you were gonna say without me interrupting a million times or Demon Mama interrupting. Go. I think Demon Mama um, is I... um not in. Oh, but you go, you go, you go, because I want to talk to Demon Mama. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So 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 uh. While we're waiting, uh, Alice, do you want to? Did you want to respond to Demon Mama or? Uh, I wanted to respond to Demon I Mama. I just cut off Riverboat. Okay. I just cut off Riverboat. Okay. Yeah. So Riverboat. 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 Did you want to go? Yeah, so basically just this this idea, I just want to introduce it to the rest of the panel, is that part of what we're arguing here is very, um, like, Western-centric. It's, again, arguing about, like, our very a very specific societal context that, like, might not necessarily apply to all different societies' uh, contexts of gender, right? Like, you can have different constructions of gender that are not based on sex or are not based on sexual characteristics. Um, you can have concepts of gender that are based on what people actually do within society. It can be more of a societal role that someone actively takes on. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we can talk about maybe how there are different ways that that can be, gender might be implemented in society that could be better um but like yeah like a lot of this um like definitional semantic talk i don't i don't think it's actually it all is, that useful it is entirely useful because gender only exists in the realm of language it is discursively constructed you all actually, right everybody like, you ready is, you ready unfortunately there Let's is get no some way energy around in it here. and the exact thing you're talking about language is the answer to that so like the postmodern mm -hmm. conceptions of gender and the push to to push gender as something that is performative is the answer to the fact that gender is not universal and has lots of different meanings so i only i only react to that because people mm -hmm. constantly say oh it's semantics and it's literally my well, whole life and it actually is the answer to like a lot <laughs> yeah. of things and i i don't mean to belittle it by calling it a semantic issue what i what i mean is like 
we could be having a completely different conversation about this if we were talking about it in a different language with a different like societal context behind it and a history you, behind it. So, so, okay, I, so I have to challenge this. I hear this a lot, but I feel like I feel like it's I feel like it's not really true. I feel like if we were to go across the vast majority of societies on the planet, there's going to be like some like if we show like a woman and a man wearing somewhat traditional, it can be Eastern garb, it can be Western garb, it can be whatever, um, based on both like gender expression. So the things they're wearing, the way they carry themselves and like the um, like the actual like secondary sexual characters in the structure of the body. I feel like most people will have a pretty coherent definition um, of like, whoa, well, like this is a or, or at least an understanding of like, oh, that's a woman, that's a man. I, yeah, I feel like I, you run into a lot of problems when we start off with this, like, what is, what is I think, a really radical take, the idea but, that, like, oh, well, everybody's got a totally different understanding of what male and female is, when that doesn't really seem well, to track to, so to reality at all. I'm, I'm just well, going like, to kind of put, the, put this idea out there that, like, when you say, like, oh, people would have a pretty good idea, yeah, within that context, but, like, if sure. you showed somebody, like, a, a male or female, and they're or, or how they're traditionally dressed in one society and you showed that to somebody from another society, they might not be able to recognize. Um, it, it is contextual. Sure, but while that's possible, so this is what I'm really curious about. So let's say that you mm -hmm. show, do you know Sneaky? No idea. Okay, so Sneaky was a player on C9 who does, I don't think they're, I don't think Sneaky's trans. I think Sneaky for a while Sne just Sneaky's did. not trans. No, Sne Sneaky's okay. not trans. No. Just, it, just cross-dressing, right? For their cosplay stuff? Yeah. Yes. So um, that's somebody where if you were to show somebody a picture of that, they would immediately go like, oh, okay, that's a woman 100%. They would assume it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were to disrobe Sneaky, I mean, this is a little weird to talk about somebody else, but like if you were to start showing them like pictures of them naked, well, now their, their identifier would change. They would be like, oh, wait, well, hold on. That's okay, not a woman. So, so, so if you're, this, you're talking so about asking, showing somebody naked. Yeah. So what I'm asking okay. here is like, if that definition or understanding is changing once they're like getting more information about the person, what process is going on there? If a person is not appealing to some underlying understanding of like the content of male or female, I mean, like, you're doing it right now though. You're like literally, you're conflating sex and gender in this conversation. Holy and shit! We, Wait, I think my Discord is bugging out because the voice is like bugging. It sounds you sound really similar to Demon Mom right now. It, it, it well, so Wait, to to kind of hold, answer. Wait, could I could I jump in on this when there's a free moment? Uh, I, I'll, I'll make my point real quick, and then I need to use the bathroom, so that would be perfect. Yeah, go for it. I'm just I'm curious what you think is happening there. Yeah, no, I I think that one of the things I, is that the more information you have on a certain individual, the no, more accurately so. you might be able to gender them. Like I, I don't think Here that's really go. controversial, right? Like but when you say accuracy and gendering, you're implying that there is a truthful, like underlying fact of the matter of what the gender is, because you're well, getting it, more accurate. This so is what the implication is. So it also sorry. depends we'll on whether you're talking phone. about sex or gender. And that's kind of what we started talking about in the first place. Because Let's say we're talking sex here. Okay. So if we're talking about sex, well then you'd have to break down like, well, okay, what are their genitals? Okay, well their genitals seem to be male. Okay, but what about what about their DNA? We don't we don't know what their DNA is just by looking at them. So oh okay, we'll give them we'll give them a blood test. We'll see what their DNA is. Oh okay, well their DNA is XX, but they have some sort of hormonal condition. Let, let let's check out their hormones. Okay, but so like you start breaking it down into like all of these different levels where like the more information you have on somebody, the less like it actually makes sense to be like putting them into a male yeah. or female category um in in a lot of cases you know okay uh, i yeah. won't argue who wants to go all right that's watch, okay. okay um yeah okay i i feel like we split hairs on this also hey my name is vosh i'm cisgender i apologize for my existence okay so <laughs> When we, when the earlier somebody, I don't know anyone's names except for you, Destiny Demon Mom, of course. Um, but earlier, um, it was said that the more you know about a person, Thank you, you can generally accurately guess a person's gender. So the reason for that is because most people are cisgender. While there's not an inherent correlation or causative element between sex and gender, you can generally make some inferences based on people's appearances, which will point you towards their sex, and that will usually overlap with a person's gender, assigned gender at birth, you know? So that's generally what people do when they make guesses. Most people, maybe even everybody, does some amount of uh, assuming gender in their day-to-day -day life. Because most people are cis, and because there are a lot of normative and social elements that go along with our understanding of people's genders. It's not that anymore, Allison. We treat them even from the get-go. It's not Before anymore. Before we can even ask the person's pronouns or whatever. When we talk about what the definition of gender is, I feel like there are two 
it seems like they conflict, but they really don't ideas. Remember, if you're watching now, I stream people, on YouTube mostly. Whether they're trans or cis or whatever. And that's usually thus. Gender matters to me, but gender doesn't really matter. And while I think those two things seem sort of initially contradictory, they make sense when you unpack whatever that meaning is. It's usually when I think of gender meaning something to me, it's a matter of my relationship to myself, oh, yeah, my self identity, and more, maybe even more practically, when I tell other people what my gender is, when I tell them what my pronouns are, I'm telling them what block of behavior I want them to regard me with, how they should refer to me, how they should treat me. There's a set of social roles and expectations associated with one gender that I would rather be treated by than another. That obviously makes a pretty huge deal to trans people, which is why we try not to misgender them and what have you. But just because there's some personal utility to be derived from the distinction between whatever roles you'd get from one group of gendered norms to another doesn't mean there's anything inherent about the process. There's a, uh, a quote from a person, that's as far as I'm going to get remembering this, saying sometimes the best thing that you can do to a question is to dissolve it rather than to resolve it. I feel like gender might be one of those. I don't know. Yep, Wittgenstein. Huh? I said it's always this conversation always comes back to Wittgenstein, doesn't it? Well, sure, because at the end of the day, every term refers to the collective understanding of it. I mean, you were talking about this earlier. What is a chair, right? Well, a chair is how can you define a chair in a way that encompasses all chairs, but nothing that isn't a chair? It's impossible. You know, you're always relying on what people think something is. And if gender's that way, sure. But we make the prescriptive argument because a lot of people do have understandings of gender which clash with p understandings other people hold the if you identify as a woman you are one narrative is increasingly popular in america as far as i can tell it's probably within the next 50 years going to be if not the then a dominant <laughs> understanding of what gender means um and at that point do all of the trans women suddenly then become women when that narrative becomes dominant no we make the prescriptive argument here we can derive more social utility from making gender as arbitrary as something to be defined by social self-identification which i think would be better for most people because any other definition falls flat you go biological you hurt a lot of people you know you go um uh, presentative, like the Judith Butler performative gender argument. Well, does is a not closeted trans person trans then? Just because hmm? it's it's not presentative. It's not about presentation. Performance doesn't mean theatrical performance. It means performing tasks. It means performing a series of tasks which are associated with a gender that have no. They copy something. They imitate something that never really existed. Performance is the same as performing an operation. And actually, there would be a great detriment to every woman who uses the category of woman within the judicial system to fight for their rights to make gender this arbitrary nothing category. It would have a huge detriment. And trans women already are women. We don't need to abolish women in order for trans women to be women trans why women are already women. why are trans wait 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 wait, wait 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 hold on i wasn't making that argument at all i wasn't saying you have to abolish yeah, womanhood said it, it should be so gender should be so arbitrary it has nothing no meaning other than social identification well i ha i mean i'm a gender abolitionist it's a position that i and i imagine a number of other progressive people hold that ultimately gender is a destructive category that it doesn't actually serve us much benefit so there what are other is the ways gender you're abolishing though vosh like i i honestly i really agree with you but this is like literally my whole thing and i just want to know like when you say that you're abolishing gender what is it that you are abolishing what is the strict definition given that all gender theorists haven't come up with a clear understanding of what gender is so what is the understanding you have of what you are abolishing so, well the, would... the broader understanding of gender abolitionism was that you wouldn't assign any social roles, tasks, or obligations, or expectations to a person based on their birth sex. Because that's functionally what gender does to people, you know? Yeah. You relate to your gender in different ways as you grow up, but most people's relationships to their gender is mostly a doctor says XXXY at birth, you know, what set of clothes are you wearing? How are we going to treat you? What school are you going to go to, et cetera, et cetera. An ideal gender abolished world would be one where that doesn't happen, right? You know, you pop out a kid and it's like, uh, hey, they can do whatever they want. But if they want to go by other social identifiers as they grow older, that's great. As long as it's a conscious and, uh, you know, free choice that isn't coercive, as our current system definitely is. And Joe, that's my, that's my question to you is like, so there are things that got uh, ascribed to you because you are presumed to be a woman and there are things that 
and I'm going to say something controversial, I pass most of the time. And most of the time, people think that I am also just a woman. They don't think I'm a trans woman. They don't ascribe that to me most of the time. So I get ascribed the things that society ascribes to women. And I get the negative stereotypes that society ascribes to women. And when I talk about gender abolitionism, I'm talking about that concept of I don't want to be ascribed things societally just because I pass as a woman, just because I take hormones, just because whatever. I want to be able to not have those things happen. I don't want them to happen to other women. I don't want them to happen to men. That's what I talk about when I talk about gender abolition. And the future course, genders I, I, will be, are you a gamer or a weeb, you know? Yeah, Social exactly. categories that you fit into because of personal choices that you've made rather than... Can I ask for broader. trans people in this panel? Is there anybody here that... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before oh, you do that, I want, I want Joe to be able to respond. Then we can ask a question, please. Joe. No, I don't really have a response other than, of course, I don't want gender roles and gender stereotypes and gender oppression to continue. I think the concept of gender is essential to ensuring that happens so long as the juris judicial system remains, where we need that categorization in order to gain representation. So, of course, I don't want oppression based on gender, but I think that uh, maybe I'm just misunderstanding because I'm looking at very specific ideas of gender abolition. But I think that um, I, gender I, I ascension. have a real issue as well with the idea that gender is something gender that ascension. is uh, construed based on shared trauma or shared oppression. I really don't like that definition of womanhood at all. Um, so I would agree, yes, we shouldn't have some sort of gender oppression, but I, I'm not sure. Sometimes people put the abolition. Actually, let me think on it. Let me think about it. I okay. just want to say the yeah. abolition thing, this is like a, a 500 years from now, maybe we reshuffle social priorities type of thing. In reality, yeah, I mean, no, I claim I'm I a gender abolitionist, that. but I care about being a guy, you know? We have our preferences. We're going to live with them. And as long as we have them, they should be respected. But in the long term, we should probably care a little less about this stuff. Not telling individuals to, but placing less social weight on it. We already do this. I mean, it used to be men and women, what we understood them to be, dressed and acted completely differently. I mean, 1950s America, you know, I mean, a wall between the two. And nowadays, there's a lot more, you know, uh, ambiguity when it comes to expected performance on whether or not you're a man or a woman, self-identified or otherwise. So that's good. I mean, we probably should tear down those walls, no? Um, let's go to uh, Destiny. You had a question you want to ask? Yeah. What do we think about trans people that claim that they experience gender euphoria? So my, my question is like, so for people that say that like, um, we should abolish all the expectations or all the roles that go along with gender, for certain trans people that say that they have an experience of gender euphoria, so when they feel like they're treated in such a way societally that coincides with their um, gender identity, do like, how, how do we- this, I think this comes down to what I'd consider to be like a, a really, really shallow understanding of gender. Um, the argument earlier was about like, is, is gender, um, I don't know, uh, is the, uh, I identify as a woman, therefore I am a woman, is that a tautology kind of thing, right? And I think we're kind of looking at gender in a, in, in a very sort of simplistic kind of surface level way that's like very sociological. Um, whereas I do think there are like inherent parts to gender. I think gender is like a, uh, a self schema. So like a framework we use to sort of categorize ourselves and it's based on both societal expectations and internal kind of uh, identity factors like psychological factors and so on that we sort of slot into uh, those sociological expectations and that the sociological expectations kind of feed back into. So it's like this weird little feedback loop. So if you're asking about like gender euphoria, like if we get rid of all these categories, knows, right? if there's no way to tell kind of what gender somebody is, then there's going to be no sort of affirmation of that self schema as other people recognizing your self schema and treating you the way that you would expect to be. Could I yeah. weigh in on that very briefly? Uh, yes, and then I'll go to Jack. I just want to say, I think people have ideas about who they are, gender, gamer, anything. And okay, people I'll get have, happy I'll when they're some. treated it's in okay, ways that conform with those ideas. I don't think that assigning roles to people based on their birth sex is the best way to procure those positive feelings. I think that even in a world where we assigned no inherent expectations to behavior, there are still ways for people to find categories, to make categories for themselves, ones based on their choices, and then to feel euphoric or happy or otherwise 
when they're affirmed in those ways. I mean, our concept of gender euphoria is usually Vosh framed is around on the point fact on that the, prior to them experiencing it, they were denied something, either a sense of recognition, self-identification, or in the cases for, um, you know, like transition, like biological transition, sometimes it's actually like a bodily change. But all of those things, the underlying criteria can still be achieved without gender needing exist. Um, it's really just a matter of allowing people to be happy and to be who they are. Yep, I agree. Okay. Yeah, uh, so chat, please. the idea of gender euphoria can come at, like, you, you can get gender euphoria from any number of different places, whether it's people that you care about in your life treating you the way you want to be treated after having been denied such treatment for a long period of time, or, you know, just looking the way you want to be able to look. And for a lot of trans people, that would be a struggle regardless, you know, like it, it, it's hard to physically transition. Look, look, going through going through puberty two times, uh, not not great, especially when the second time you have like a job and adult responsibilities, not not ideal. Um, and so it, it can be a struggle and achieving something even for like a little bit of time. Yeah, it, it, your brain, your brain's like, good job. And you, you feel you feel nice about it, you know. Well, it's it's your brain patting you on the back a little bit, um, bringing your 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 identity and your your body into somewhat uh, a bit of harmony. And I, at least that's what that's how I interpret in, it anyway. In order for yeah. that to happen, there would have to be some kind of like inherent thing about you, right? That means yeah, that... harmony implies yeah. that there's like a match between two things, and it seems like we're denying the existence of that internal thing, which is some gender identity. And yeah, I guess my, my, the problem what is the I'm internal having, thing. The well, the internal thing it seems to be that we have some feeling, some internal feeling of like gender. Yeah. Well, we I have mean, some internal. Well, gender means a million things. We have some no, internal feelings about I don't ourselves. Think I think we have an internal, like, I think that there is like some internal feeling of gender that we seem to understand. In the gender mean when you in say that. In a practical sense, what is gender there? Like, are we talking about how we want to be treated? Are we talking about the gender particle? The names we would prefer to be called? Are we talking about how our body should look? Um, what what specific? Yeah, I think, I think that I think that all, I think that all of those things are encompassed There's under the concept of gender. There's something I wanted to say on gender. this that I think. Before you do, before you do, because. Once you do, I'm, I'm going, uh, it's going to take a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just want uh, Red Charlie, who had her hand up, want to make sure I, I, I can get her. Uh, get her. Oh, um, I see. I see. Yeah. So like, I was thinking of something like, what does everyone here think? Um, so we're talking about gender abolition, right? And like, this intersects obviously with gender euphoria, gender dysphoria. If we put someone like a a, a baby on like an island and they have no society, right? Um, would gender dis would gender dysphoria be possible? Like, if there is no gender in society, could someone feel gender dysphoria, or would it just be body dysphoria? I I think that I, I mean, obviously, gender being a social construct would rely on existing within some sort of social construct. But you would still have like body dysmorphia. I, I think that's definitely yeah. a thing that would still occur. Mm. Um, like you, you can look at the the case of like intersex people, for example, uh, who have a disproportionately no, high rate of no, body dysmorphia, especially if you know their parents choose what they want their child to have in their downstairs department or whatever. Um, so that would still no. exist. So, so let's go to my mom, 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 then Vivian, uh, then Destiny. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that gender euphoria is just another term for the joy that comes from self-realization and self-actualization. Uh, I don't really see, like, gender... I think that when we talk about gender euphoria, there's obviously a lot of personalization, and if gender is a huge issue in your life that has stood in the way of you being able to express yourself or in one way or another to varying degrees, um, I think it is absolutely natural that we would have a term for, like, hey... Uh, this shit is fixed and I feel great about being able to self-realize and self-actualize. Like those are things we already acknowledge as concepts for all kinds of other things. I don't think that um, it's any different when it comes to, to gender. Now I acknowledge that gender is a really, really uh, hazy um, subject and that's why there's some confusion and, and um, inc unclearness or whatever on, on some of these terms. But, but the reality is that there's all kinds of examples in our life where we achieve something that is important to us as an individual, and we receive euphoria as a result of that. Um, I don't think that's any different for gender, and I don't think that that would disappear um, in a post 
you know, in a gender abolitionist or gender ascensionist, uh, uh, as I'm going to use from now on, uh, society, um, because uh, I think it would just be understood slightly differently. I think that there would still be people who are like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, this, like, dress feels great. Being seen as beautiful by people is fucking awesome. I love this shit. It, they just wouldn't necessarily call it gender euphoria. That's just a term that exists as a product of our of our current environment, in my opinion. And it's it's very very similar to many other types of euphoria that we receive. Let's go to Vivian and then uh, Justin. Yeah. So as to the desert island question, I think like what Jack said about like. Uh, so I think there are a couple of different kinds of dysphoria. There's like body dysphoria where like it's, you know, you look in the mirror or you look down at yourself and you're like, this shit just doesn't fit, right? That's probably closer to like dysmorphia. And then there's a kind of social dysphoria that exists, right? When your internal schema doesn't match with the uh, uh, way other people perceive you and maybe you're treated differently. Somebody uses the wrong pronouns or like misgenders you, whatever, right? Um, in, in the desert island equation, like, that's really difficult to happen because you're not fucking interacting with anybody else, right? It could be possible that you could experience a kind of um, uh, social gender euphoria in such a situation because you might find that there are like certain activities that you like doing by yourself that fit with this internal schema and you could be like, well, this is this is a job or a, or a thing that is meant for me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm more in tune with this kind of activity perhaps, but I don't think that the social dysphoria could exist because there's nobody to sort of enforce upon you that you, that your internal schema doesn't match their, their, uh, their person schema of you. Destiny. Okay. So two things. So one gender euphoria, my understanding is it doesn't refer to just like, Oh, I'm being treated how I want to be treated or, Oh, like I'm happy that I'm getting to do something I wanted to do it. My understanding is that it specifically refers to the idea that you are being treated in society as the gender that you identify as that, that feeling of like doing something or being treated in a, in a way such that it closely like harmonizes with your gender identity is supposed to present like a special feeling that feels um, euphoric as opposed to the dysphoria that one might feel when there, uh, when there's a massive mismatch between their expression and their identity or the perceived gender and their gender identity um, for the first thing. And then for the second thing, um, I, I guess like for this idea that like gender is just 1 million percent socially constructed and like there is no internal gender, anything at all, I, I guess like how do we deal conceptually with the um, with like the with the intersex experiments where um, somebody's born intersex and the doctor just makes a call like, oh, well, we're just going to make this person this sex, we're going to do the surgery and then boom. And then some of these people end up growing up and they like kill themselves because they experience such dysphoria throughout their lives. Nothing ever feels right. Like if it was all just socially programming, like shouldn't we be able to just say, oh, well, you know, they should have been, they were treated well, as a male, they should have okay. been treated well, well, been well, we're Two conflating things. here. Two I think things, we're okay. conflating. Well, look at, look at okay. Jack and then Bosch, okay? First off, um, you, there, there are multiple types of gender euphoria. One I can don't be know what the fuck Destiny's talking stuff. about here. Another can be related to body stuff. Um, I'm seriously confused. And but okay. they're, as far as like intersex people, like it, it's very, 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 very rare that any intersex person is born with like a life-threatening condition where like the doctor's like, oh, uh, uh, the, the genitals, I, I need I need to operate. You know, it, that that never happens. Like almost He just happens. catch what, yes, yes, Norman. Um, he just caught wind and wanted so to finish. Just, 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 right? just, but just don't, hmm. don't operate on the kid's genitals. Like just, just wait until they're an adult and they can make their own choice. Yep. Well, I, there is yeah, a really I, I, famous I, experiment that he was referencing though that mm -hmm. like is often cited in like John conversations Lee. around being trans and so on. I forget what it was called, but yeah, yeah it was an act of absolute medical monstrosity. Should have never fucking happened. It, it uh, wasn't intersex, but, though. It was a botched um, circumcision, so he decided to do SRS on a kid. Yeah, yeah. that was Christ. Look, so. well, the conflation between physiological and or, and sociological criteria here is really, really important. So with regards to the intersex thing, yeah, I would say that would probably be an instance of like a, um, of a, you know, like a, body dysmorphia sure um, silent where there's the the incompatibility there isn't necessarily though it often can be social roles but it's your body not being the way you have some internal feeling it mm -hmm. should be and i think that very often is uh biological but i wouldn't argue that's like True, necessarily Roman. a component of gender or at the very least it wouldn't have to Yo, be. we can easily imagine rats. a gender abolished world so you know your kid's born kid can have x y x x whatever genitals doesn't really matter Enough treat it all the same and um and we can imagine in such a world even if people don't really have a conceptualization of what a man or a woman is that some people would still be uncomfortable with their oh, body oh i got to give you the change perms, it through you know vermin. hormone surgery that sort of thing and that would be fine that'd be good um 
I don't know if that I'll needs give it to, to be a component of gender, because without gender, such a thing would still take place. And I do think, um, and this varies from person to person, but I think a lot of dysphoria and euphoria also come from um, a set of feelings people have about the way given gender should look, even if that's not an inherent component right, you can of nuke the now, gender Berman. identity you can itself. Nuke now. So an example of this would be that there are plenty of woke feminist trans women who are perfectly aware of the fact that cisgender women grow hair on their arms and legs and armpits. It just ev Everyone does. I mean, almost everyone. Some people are naturally hairless, but almost everyone does. And in spite of a perfectly consistent, rational understanding that that is in fact the case, these trans women will often do everything in their power to make themselves oh, as give it hairless to you as Gina. possible. Gina, don't worry. And in doing so, they're not so much trying to look like a cis woman in a biological sense, they're trying to conform to expectations. But if we didn't have those gendered expectations about how cis women should groom themselves and wax their armpits or what have you, would that be a component of dysphoria for trans women? Or if we lived in a world without that expectation, would trans women be okay, all of them, I mean, having hairy armpits and going, oh, yeah, fine, this is fine. It's Probably interesting. Not. I mean, there's no we... hard line to split these two It feels like we literally are making... It feels Sorry. like basically the argument is that like we nobody in here believes that trans people would exist if like we didn't have gendered roles in society. Do we? Does everyone in here believe that? Because that's what it no, sounds like I'm hearing. There would still no. be people with sexual. Um, wait, why would you? Why would you be trans at all if there were no gender roles in society? Unless wait, there was some second. underlying fact of the matter. I, so no, I think that body. basically everyone would probably fit what we currently uh, recognize as trans. People would express themselves in ways that we currently do not allow people to express themselves in ways that we clinicalize and and call. Uh, deviant and whatnot i think is actually I, I, we talked about this earlier i talked about how there's tons of people who um like for me uh not transitioning was ridiculously painful enough that it pushed me like to to aggressively pursue transition not everyone's to that degree but many people do chafe against the roles that they're put into just to different different degrees I think that we would have a society where maybe we wouldn't have the concept of trans people, but pe but there would probably be all kinds of people that if we were to map their expression onto our currently existing society as like a side-by-side -side analysis, they would probably be identified as trans in this society, but in the future society, you, they would be freely to do whatever they wanted. If, if, you, if you eliminated all of that then, let's say we eliminate all of our gender roles, it sounds like what you've done is you've just like conveniently like recreated gender roles like or, or you recreated some internal gender expression what? so we said let's say that we eliminate all gender roles and all gender expression from society and all that stuff well there's still going to be some people that feel dysphoria based upon their primary and secondary sexual characteristics that might require sex mm. reassignment surgery or hormone replacement yes, surgery. Like, well, it uh -huh. sounds like, well, yeah, but when you say that, it sounds like you actually are saying that there is some underlying fact of the matter. No, Even no. if we eliminated the whole concepts entirely, there you, there necessarily must be some underlying no, fact I, of the matter. I think, if wait, people, no, that would be a physiological thing that you would do on a medical level. There, you need to... Yeah, we don't think that the, the social components of, of transness or of gender are things that need exist. But there are still going to be people who, for biological reasons, want uh, their bodies to look and behave differently than how they do. How but do they want them to look and behave, though? I, I mean, because well, I, some look, people who like, are born we, with we a given have, set of genitals of want a different one. Here. Yeah. A bunch yeah. of trans <laughs> people here. I transitioned because I wanted to look and feel different than what I did before. And like mm. that was definitely a component of it. It wasn't all entirely how people mm. look at me. Yeah, but like, uh, is, it, is it just by chance that like all of those feelings tend to conform with like the Western understanding I, of like no, how? But wait, but that, wait, that's what I wait. Like, mm -hmm. No, 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 people, I, I just talked about that, though, with the shaving example. So people's understanding of what a given body looks like or what a sex looks like is influenced by social roles surrounding that sex, a, a la waxing armpits. But that's not an inherent thing. We're taught that. I believe that in a world without gender, people who experience sexual dysphoria would still want to get corrective surgery for that. And that's good. What would the should. dysphoria be, though, if there was no expectation? Wait, Where does that dysphoria come from? Let's let a trans individual in uh, to help answer these. Um, but uh, let's go to Alice, um, and then Vivian, um, and then Demon. Okay. Okay. Uh, just to just to address that, uh, Destiny. So um, if 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 the roles were removed, I don't care. Um, like uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, I I would have done. Uh, you know, I would have expressed myself however the hell I wanted to express myself, regardless. And I still do. Like if you see me on streams, there's many times where I am not presenting femininely. Um, uh, I, but I have uh, primarily um, sexual uh characteristics 
uh, you know, a dysphoria based on sexual characteristics, I still would have had that dysphoria regardless of what the social expectations were because it's based purely on the sexual characteristic component, not mm -hmm. the societal expectation. Now, maybe I would have like, um, what like is that? Like what? Oh, like right. you said, that you having a dysphoria that's based on some like biological characteristic. That dysphoria, like what is that characteristic? Like what? What is it? Who I cares? don't like having a dick. I don't like not having boobs. I don't like. Um, there's like literal physical components. I don't like. Yeah, but the way like, that... there's literally we have a category that's like created to describe dicks and boobs, and it's sex, right? Like these are all like primary or secondary yes. sexual characteristics. Yes, yeah. I have so dysphoria based on my sex, not their my gender. Sex. But that doesn't have to, I, I don't buy the argument that gender must exist because there are people who have problems with their sexual characteristics. I'm not, saying, I'm, what I'm, saying, I'm not arguing whether or not gender exists or whatever in some like broad category. What, like, what I'm getting at is that the, the concept of sex or gender even, um, gender being abstracted of sex, but we'll say sex even as a category, that there seems to be some underlying fact of the matter that's not just like an agreement that we have with each other. There seems to be some underlying fact of the matter well, there. Yeah, of course there are underlying components of sex that aren't exclusively so you're wait, asking was why people want about? wait you you're asking why people want things why does somebody want why do you think that the only reason that say like somebody could want to get ripped as fuck is only social or do you think they could just be like hey i think i look good this way and i want to be ripped as fuck and i want other people to see me ripped as fuck there's no i, I mean like that is a a yeah there's probably some weird process in our mind that determines why we want that thing but we don't need to even try and categorize that that's separate from somebody's ability to identify as who they are. That's what, what I think we're trying to get at here. There's a consistent conflation. It's, the, it's, not, it's not the same. I think all of, this, uh, all of this plays into something that I've been playing around with for a while and trying to like work out whether it's like congruent or makes sense. And you know what? There's a lot of big brains on this panel, so maybe I can just float something, right? Um, I said this to Destiny before, but like probably not really that open otherwise. Um, I, I, I think there is a good argument to be made for a component of gender being like a sexual, sexual character, uh, secondary sexual characteristic, uh, a neurophysiological or uh, trait or set of traits uh, that map onto sort of a, a, uh, a social schema, a, a social framework, right? And like I said earlier, they sort of like feed into each other. So there's like this internal component, which is something that's like inherent and almost essential possibly fluid can change over time um but is part of the sort of like uh lens through which we view society which is informed by actual physical like neurophysiological yeah. uh construct within the brain um i, I don't think I, I disagree with you but yeah. the, the arguments that the other people are making are in complete contrast to that where they it seems to be no, and I know, I know, I know, saying, but it I seems like the other arguments that there's there's no <laughs> underlying like fact of the matter at all Wait, there Fosh is for up sex. Really? on the arms and stuff like does nothing to address that. Obviously, this would be like a societal expectation that is like pushed upon people, and they use their internal map, right, where they're like, okay, so I identify as this gender, blah blah blah, um, and this is what society expects of me because of that, and then they will engage in those kinds of actions. But there's still something internal going on there that informs them that they ought to identify as this gender, and then they see other people who also identify as that gender behaving in certain ways and are, are sort of pressured to match that i, I think i can i, I guess i I'm, can I, I i guess i'm really i i i want to know what the confusion is destiny i feel i feel like this has been like we're, we're talking in circles at this point so like are, are you saying like you think that there's like an underlying thing that's making people Do want we, to so, transition yeah so my like problem what? is that it seems like there are i i actually can't even keep track of this point because it's hard to keep it's hard to keep <laughs> no, i'm not blaming you guys it's just, I'm just in terms of understanding what people are saying it feels like um, a lot Watch of people this. on this panel, or some people on this panel, believe that gender and sex are wholly arbitrary things that are, like, not only are they ill-defined, you actually can't define them. That the concept of sex or gender literally escapes definition and because they're not there might be some exception to the rule or whatever, that these things are indefinable. And I'm my 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 that. challenge to that is it feels like there does seem to be some sort of internal identification with this concept that makes it so that you can't just simply say, oh, well, sex and gender are just totally not real things. We can abolish them and they could just be names we give ourselves. It seems that that would be contrary to what most people internally. Yeah, and then my, my example for that is that one, I can tell you, is why you get afterwards. kids that have like um, botched sex reassignment surgeries at birth, they go through life feeling miserable, even if they're socialized a certain way, and then they end up killing themselves. The one example that Vivian brought up, I wish I could remember the name of this case. I can explain this. Um, 
or, or the idea that people, even in a society where there are no gender expectations, would still feel like a trans person. They would still feel like there's some fundamental mismatch between their body's characteristics and the gender that they identify with internally, or the sex even Wait, they identify I'm, with Okay, can I, can I'm sorry, I, I think I'm I can sorry if I, if I, I missed really the opening of this, but when has anyone said that sex is undefinable? Everything <laughs> that you just described uh, I know is that very, At the very least, Demon Mama was saying that. Or did, am I wrong on that, Demon Mama? You're not saying that? No, I, oh so, my god. Like, I, I so feel like you get lost in your own strumming. You get lost in your own strumming. Let me talk. It's my turn, right? Right? It's my turn? This was right. I was I was at the next MQ, right? And then we'll get you injected. Listen, so, okay. Uh, God, like, First of all, no, I don't, I mean, I do believe that all things that we use that are linguistically are to some degree a social construct, to a certain degree. Obviously, there are very different um, parameters for those things. We, this is just a fact of language. Humans communicate by making constructs and I'm transmitting them to one another. human language. Right, 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 right. Well, you, do, you well, clearly are. We have are, to be but... if we're talking. Right. No, right. we're so, not. I'm talking uh, okay, about the can you, can you, you're, you're clearly that confused. Exists. Just let me, let me explain. I'll make it, I'll make it clear. Um, like, the, the the fact of the matter is like i do believe that that sex has um like sex is useful as a biological term to some degree i think we can go back and forth about how we define that and scientists have and are but sex is a descriptor of biological processes some of which we do not fully understand yet gender is in my opinion the social side our 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 self perception uh our expression yeah, these sort of things okay. right well no but there seems to be there does seem to be and i don't believe that there is as much of a uh, connection as some people think for example our society has predominantly uh, assumed that gender and sex are 100 percent one-to-one if you're if you're female there is some essential femaleness that makes you like frilly dresses and blah 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 I don't think that's the case. I think that many people have all of these different tastes and that we should move these things apart, that gender is better understood as a concept of identity, of, 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 a, of, of social interaction, and that we don't really use it, like we don't really use gender like all that much in a meaningful way, that we should, we should make it more useful by acknowledging that this is a, 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 a part of identity. Now, there are- Okay, how does that make wait, sense? Wait, hold I don't on. understand. Let, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. So, uh, let me pull from personal experience, and I think this will make sense. When I first began my transition, I believed that I would probably someday get sexual reassignment surgery. I am no longer interested in that because I realized over time that that was not something that was causing dysphoria for me for whatever reason. Now, previously, there was a social expectation in my mind about what a woman is, and that De that definition included needing to have a vagina or a vulva or however you want to use the terminology okay no, i no longer believe that and you still that... wanted to be a woman right no, no, wait, yes what of I, course I, but wait, i didn't what but i don't I understand tied. is you're specifically saying that anybody can call themselves any gender they want yes how can you how does that view matching what you're saying now you're saying what? so earlier you said anybody can call themselves any gender they want or anybody can identify anything but now you're saying well hold on maybe there is some underlying fact of matter no, how because are these you, you, you destiny you're missing the difference between sex and gender like this is the core problem that's happening here you're I'm not only acknowledging talking a about hold on Hold on, stop. First of all, I'm only talking about sex right now, okay? We'll, we'll just exclusively talk about sex. Do you agree that, like, sex exists as some, like, actual, like, definable category that of, people understand? Uh, yeah, to some degree, yes, of course. All, like, obviously, it is a real thing. Like, okay, do you think that yeah. gender is somewhat, like, causally abstracted off of sex or no? No, not really. I would say it's correlative. I mean, I, I think there's, I think there's so correlation. The fact that like ninety-eight percent of people are hold cisgender. On, hold on a like, second. Doesn't you ask me a question, I want to answer the question. So, please. yeah, please um, do without anecdotes and analogies, and just answer the question. Oh, quit whining! What, what, when did you become such a whiny bitch? I, it's so boring because you guys take like three minutes to answer your question. Oh, you're asking. Like, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Annoying. Oh, sorry. I couldn't give you a one-sentence definition of gender. I don't, Jesus, you need me as many real as you want. I don't need like fifty analogies to bodybuilding or or anecdotes. Just like give me. I'll jump in. I'll take longer than both you combined. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you could just answer the question, so we can move on to Jack. Yeah. Jack can you can you state the question for me again, so I can I can get the answer. Okay. So I I it just it felt like earlier all of us were saying um because I think Joe was arguing that there must be some definition of woman, whether we're talking gender or sex. I think earlier you guys were talking sex, but I guess we can say sex or gender, right? For either of these, it seemed like Joe was arguing that there was some underlying definition that people seem to understand internally. But then it felt like demon mama. Your argument is like, well, no, literally anybody could call themselves any gender they want, and it would be okay. It should be a descriptor like a name. That was the comparison. Yeah. You yeah for gender. Now it's yes, like, for well, gender. there is no, some for, underlying for fact no, of the matter no, related to gender. No, for gender. 
I don't believe that sex and gender, I think that in our society right now, we erroneously ascribe gender as something that like grows out of sex. I don't think that's the case, actually. And I okay, think if that's not the case, me, how I'm do we deal with I'm the kids? Not I'm not done. I know what okay. you're referencing, and you have a poor understanding of what actually. Oh sex my god! You're literally. You just want wait, to. That, wait, that's a sex okay. thing. Wait, hold. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Hold on. I we on really display. need to split this line right here. Okay, sex is real. It is to an extent arbitrary. It is not a uh, binary. There's a bimodal component. You just okay? said that three times. We understand. Go. Okay. Okay. So yeah, to, well, uh, just to hammer it in because it keeps coming up again. Gender. Well, that's a lot more complicated. I think that gender is broadly just another social category that allows us to express who we are. Most people are okay with the category wait, wait, that's this thrown is my at question. them. This is my question. I want, I need, I want to hear an answer to this. Wait, I need to hear an answer to this. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, no. And, yes, and no. literally I'm never even got to answer. I'll, 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 I'll shut up. I'll shut up for the rest of the panel. Okay, for, okay, then for Jack, I'll shut up for the rest of the panel. I just, because we keep dancing around this so much and people want to like hop to every definition to avoid answering this question. You're so performatively angry right now. If you want to take somebody, please don't call me performative. It's hilarious. I just want to hear the question. Okay, hold on. Oh, are you saying everything you do is performative? Don't worry, I'm going to start meeting people. Don't worry. My understanding is that if you were to take a kid at birth, okay, and you were to just SRS them to, to another sex, okay, and they were to grow up, that that gender, that's not just a performative thing. That's not just a social thing. That There is some internal content there related to gender. And oh that my person God, he can't get it. With dysphoria. He actually doesn't get it. It wasn't just a matter of having the right sex parts or whatever, but there's like some deeper gender content there. So... Wait. I, I, I think... wait if there wasn't no 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 so so the the idea is that there is a correlation there but it doesn't necessarily have to happen all the time because there are botched circumcisions okay there there are there are things that happen there are intersex people uh who exist who grow up and they're perfectly fine uh they they never know or you can take a look at like how people are born with like chimerism and like you know, you grow up to be like an 80 year old grandpa and you go in for like uh, stomach cramps to the hospital and it, you, it turns out you had ovaries the entire time. You didn't know. Um, so like there there are these ideas, but when you get down to it, we don't know what makes oh, people yes, trans and we don't know what Thank makes so people much. react the way they do because it's Thank a complicated so topic. And it's kind of what I was trying to get Food. at when I talked to you earlier and was just like, the more you know about somebody, on, the more complicated it gets. Um, and if that, gender doesn't map onto sex, why is it that you would, why wouldn't we advocate then at this point for literally just like mental transition for trans people? Like just think about your gender differently. Because that doesn't work for all trans people. That, now, but why not? Some, because my question is, why oh not? God. Some trans because people oh, have, have, have have like issues with their bodies that they need to change. Did you mute and me? We know that that has, issues, though. We know that that has better medical. Can you outcomes. unmute me? Like, okay. if you want, if you want to throw, if you want to throw. I, I know not all trans people have dysphoria. I'm okay, getting no, no, to that. No, I, I'm not saying that. Like, look, to, to get to them, so they don't have body dysphoria, right? Like, that's that's not an issue. So they you just dysphoria. encourage them to think about their gender differently, and then surely it would go away if it was completely right fucking now, like socially way. constructed. Obviously, it isn't. Obviously, there's some kind Can of inherent unmuted? fucking thing that is informing the way that they think about their gender within society. Like, regardless of any kind of like body thing going on at all. So. The, the the so, issue being that for some trans people you like you can't be taught to think differently about your body that like why? that that's literally part of look, look, look destiny look, just does destiny, not understand it, the difference it's literally in the example you gave of somebody who's raised after a botched circumcision and, and like got like an srs surgery whatever did, never knew that they were trans that person was completely taught to think about their gender in a certain way it still made them miserable yeah so you then why wait that's because, like we don't your know brain, we're your not brain scientists has, your the brain question has seems an internal to... wait please please your brain has a map as to what your body is supposed to look like. There is a physiological understanding that people have. As far as I can tell, it has to do with hormone washes when you're sure, still a I understand what you're saying. I agree with you, Josh, but so, that's the right, argument no, no, that I'm no, making. No. Wait, hold on, wait, please. Okay. So what we're talking about right now is if a person, if there's some mismatch, either because of a botched surgery or because of some, uh, because of uh, the, the, the things didn't pan out 
as they should have, perhaps. And there is some physiological yeah, well, discomfort okay with the way with one's that. body is organized. Mind. That is a purely biological and sexual phenomena. Now, because our society associates gender with sex, it will remain the case that people who experience that phenomena, that physiological phenomena, one completely divorced inherently from social factors, may still feel as though there are other correlative social factors that tie into that. That a person who is a trans woman who wants to change the way their body looks might also think that they want to wear frilly dresses or what have you. But I don't believe, and as I understand it, the literature doesn't support the idea that this is inherent or biological. Instead, people grow up learning what women are supposed to look like, what men are supposed to look like. And that's a large component of the social dysphoria. Yes. That not only is your body not looking the way you want it to, but then you realize, oh God, well, people with the kind of body that I want to have, they also do X, Y, Z, and what have you. And that can conflate yes. the sociological and the psychological yeah, characteristics. Yeah, you're welcome, Razzle. But what you're describing, botched surgeries and what have you, I know sexual he only can dysphoria, because of me. this is a physiological phenomena. This would happen yeah. on a desert island. Yeah, but this would I, happen I know, but I'm going Except for that, I'm saying it seems like gender is physiological as well. That seems to be the case that it does trace to some part of the brain. And when we talk about like wait, research, what is gender? What is what do you mean wait, by gender? One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. time, time. So, uh, Destiny, finish whatever point you're trying to make, and then I'm going to go to Vivian. Now I'm going to go to Demon Mama. Then back to Jack. Finally. Sure. So when I talk about the gender that you're you very experience, welcome, Razzle. the term that Happy I'm using to have here you. is gender welcome identity. Welcome to being so an the M. gender that you identify as. It seems like that maps onto something in the brain that's not just your sexual characteristics. My understanding is that when people do like the brain scans and they look at the white matter and everything of people with who are trans who identify as transgender and they look at their brains, they actually see they're like, oh wow, this trans woman, their brain actually more resembles that of a cisgender woman than a cisgender male, pointing to like some like that there might be some what. Everything is going to be for some. When you say for some to obfuscate, it doesn't get anywhere close. Well, there to are any, there are I, trans I mean, women okay. who don't experience sexual sure. dysphoria. So Sure, I'm not necessarily. I'm just saying, that, like, it does seem to be that there is some underlying experience of gender that is independent from just what society tells you. What experience? What oh, things? Oh, Viv huh, Vivian, 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 Vivian. She can answer the question. Maybe I'm sure. Vivian, go ahead. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, Destiny's right. There are like the literature um, doesn't necessarily support Bush's position. Um, it is inconclusive. Uh, the study that Destiny is talking about, I think, was done in like fucking Sweden or something, where they like measured a whole load of um, trans women's brains and said there are certain markers that are like similar to cis women's brains, right? Um, well, but it's, correct, it's all very, it's all very wishy washy and fucking inconclusive. The the reason I brought up like uh, people loves who have thing, like uh, dysphoria one. or want to change their gender or whatever, um, but yeah, don't sure. have I'll like sexual afterwards. dysphoria, Gladly, right? Don't have like body dysphoria. Is that this indicates that there's something beyond like simply, uh, you know, the the what Vosh was talking about with the hormone washes and or whatever, and your body doesn't match, so blah blah blah. You have the sexual dysphoria, but there are people who also have like a social dysphoria, right? Without experience, the, experiencing the body dysphoria, uh, and so there has to be some sort of like psychological process. Or, in the like, that is not. Wait, hold on. That is absolutely incorrect. Just because people okay. chafe at social expectations given to them because of the biology they were they were uh, born with, does not mean there is an inherent biological characteristic yes. to those desires. Yes, that this happens yes. to people all the time. There are people who chafe at social expectations that are thrown their way without their consent in non-gendered context as well. And you so said you earlier that I was incorrect that. about a piece of literature that I cited. Could you tell me what exactly I was incorrect on, Vivian? Sorry? No, you said that I, I believe the literature overwhelmingly supports blah, blah, blah. And Wait, the what did I say? Like what was I wrong about? Sorry? About there, being, uh, about? about there being an inherent component to gender identity, a biological component to gender identity, or a neurophysiological component to gender identity. It is, what did I it say is that was Sorry? You said I, I believe the literature supports that there is no inherent uh, inherent thing to, like, uh, gender identity. Been found as in there's no indication that um that well, yeah, uh, uh, there's the, the physiological characteristics that are associated with being actually I, I think i can i think i can cut through this issue a little bit which is first of all when you have uh brain studies um it is not so easy for us to associate what spots in the brain go to what societal features so for example if you measure if you compare a brain scan of a trans woman to that of a cis female and you come up with compare you know similar structures we don't know what caused that there could be many things there could be similarities yeah. because that trans person has been living as a woman for 10 years and interacting as a a t 
typical woman in in her society is interacting and that causes your brain to shape obviously we all you acknowledge that wait wait the brain no, i'm not done yet I'm not, the brain oh my is obviously how we interact with the world so i'm not saying that there isn't like that that gender is yeah. just a, a magical thing or whatever i just think that gender the social side of it we in our society currently try to map it onto sex all the time so that we can have these weird um projections about who should be what based on what they're born as it's a very outdated way of looking <laughs> at things and it doesn't map correctly yes are there is there research that shows that trans women's brains are slightly more similar to cis women's brain yeah but we don't know fucking why we have no fucking clue and they don't know fucking why either they don't know if it's because the hrt reshapes your brain they don't know if it's because of something that happened in your utero that causes development I don't think that necessarily matters because we don't really know exactly what causes us to want and do certain things. That is a very complicated question. I don't think we need to. Absolutely. In order to Hold on. Hold on. In order to I'm not done yet. I know. Oh, you're, just, you're just trying to argue against something that I didn't fucking say. I'm not moment. arguing. I'm not even arguing against you. I'm just trying to have my turn talking, Viv. That's it. Okay, well, I did not even argue. I didn't even necessarily disagree with you. I just am. I don't even I'm know what also, we're arguing about it. I'm familiar. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 this is okay. Well, um, what I'm trying to say is that yes, these studies do exist. There's no, I don't think anybody here is contesting mm -hmm. that these studies exist. We just don't know exactly what these things map to. It's interesting for sure that cis women and trans women have some similar brain function and uh, or brain structure. That's great, but we don't know what causes that. We don't know if it's the socialization. We don't know if it's in utero. There's a there's a hormone bath. We don't know if it's it's being on HRT that changes the structure of your brain. There's all these things. And what I'm saying is that sex, the the biological structure of how sex go it, it expresses itself in our bodies and brains is one thing and gender how we interact with society how we identify with others are different things in our society they're conflated frequently which leads to imperfect answers and what i okay can i ask a question just real quick question on team okay. just on that on that particular topic can you socialize somebody out of their gender what what do you mean could you socialize somebody out can of Can you gender? explain like what you mean by that? Like how can you sure. give me so an example? So let's say you take a person and you raise them in a certain way. Um, could you take somebody that's like five, six, seven years old or whatever and just socialize them in a different way such that their gender identity changes? Probably. Bleed to some degree in oh, that, yeah, like, I would say if, almost certainly. Yeah, almost certainly. You would have, okay. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You answer. You asked me a yes. question. Let me fucking answer. Yeah, but you didn't so answer. We you were wait, like, you, no, wait, you, around no, wait, there was wait. another question that you were too scared to answer because you were going to answer. Excuse me. Oh my God. Your fantasy. Okay. Your fantasy okay. right now. I don't think she's said enough for you to arrive at that question. No, she You have a fantasy. You live in a fantasy destiny. All right. All right. Don't worry. I'm going to meet everyone. I'm going to meet everyone. So, look, look, dear mama. And try to answer the question uh, uh, in a short amount of time. Then I'm going to yes. go to Jack and I'm going to go to Alice. She had her hand up as okay. well. All right. Yes. So finish, like, seriously, like 30 yes. seconds. With regard to gender, almost certainly. I would say that almost certainly you could do that. Now, would that be a good thing? Probably in most cases not. But if you had Why a kid, not? hold on. If you had a kid. What? That was raised in like like say a, a random like white kid who was raised by native americans who believe in two-spirit maybe that child would understand themselves as a two-spirit instead of as a man or a woman that is how you could like social how we socially construct gender is super important now does that mean that it would that that would directly affect their understanding of sex not necessarily maybe it depends on the society and the words that we use okay so uh jack and then hey, uh Alice, lexi right? good to see you men back in if you want but Jack and Alice, please. <laughs> to to build the uh to build on Demon Mama's point a little bit, um, and to kind of get at what I was talking about at the very beginning of this conversation is that Trying we have like food. anthropological evidence of both what past day. and current societies across Great to see the you, world Lexi. that have more than two gender identities. Mm -hmm. Um and like it, it kind of it definitely makes it a lot harder to say that, well, like sex maps onto gender identity and like or, or gender identity maps onto sex when you have more than you got two it, Lexi. and your understanding of sex Will is do. bimodal. Um, so like, hey, Fortuna. this is definitely a giant issue Gang's that I think here. someone would have to explain if they're trying to conflate this thing. Of course they are, uh, Sex and gender. Let them stay mad. Um, and also, we th there are even fringe cases around the world where like through biological processes, third sexes have been created. That That is something that exists in the world. Like, yep heritable traits that are a third sex so like it it is a way more complicated issue than a lot of people on this panel are trying to make it um and i i, I i'm just gonna leave it at that well, okay. i think i'm saying uh, 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 alice 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 and then we'll let other people back in 
Okay, all I really want to question is, right now, first off, third sex, I want to source for that, because I have researched that, I've never found that before, any biological, biologically heritable third sex, please do send me that. Mm -hmm. um, second off, um, somebody talked about um, socialization and whether that could change, we literally went over this. So, um, uh, John to Joan, uh, uh, it was the, the, the John Money, uh, case. Um, so that literally proves that socialization is not sufficient for gender. Um, you can literally sexually reassign someone, raise them as a, a, a woman and have them still not identify with that identity. It's, you literally can't put it down purely to socialization. Hey, we're, we're doing it again. Yeah, we're complaining. What are we doing? Uh, but the, no but one is complaining. Wait, this, this is. I, I have to. I have to. I, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. This is just, just more just, complicated. Wait, wait. Just, I, okay. Wait. May I please? Uh, okay. Go ahead, Vosh. Okay. So, just because. Okay. Whew. Sex and gender are correlative in the sense that we are taught that characteristics associated with sex are also associated with the gender that we assign yes. to people Thank born you, of Vosh. that sex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vosh. So, with that being said. There are a plethora of social factors that could cause a person to chafe at social expectations that are given to them if those social expectations are somehow in conflict with those that are generally associated with the sex that their body wants them to be. That is to say, the sexual dysphoria that they feel is magnified because there are social characteristics that deviate from that which they are being taught. Now, if you were to raise some kid on a farm or on the moon, and that kid was born XY, you know, like a Thank like you, you call him a boy Thank here, you. okay? And you were to raise that kid, and you were to say, hey, yo, you're a woman, and uh, you dresses, you like dresses, and you do housework. I think that if you were to do that, and you were to do that, say, with many young boys and girls in the reverse sense, you would produce a social order about as arbitrary and about as stable as the one we have today. Yep. That the roles are arbitrary, but the group identifiers it's inform moon our True. placement within those roles. Now, if you were to take a, a person born X, Y, like a boy or whatever, and then raise them as a woman here in America today, there might be some agitation or dysphoria caused by the fact that they recognize there's a pretty significant difference between how they look and how they're treated relative to other people. And that might magnify issues that might lead to them developing sexual or social dysphoria, depending on the ways in which they were raised, quote unquote, as a woman. So huh. these factors, they conflate and they overlap significantly. But I reject the idea that people who kill themselves because of botched uh, um, SRS surgery or uh, intersex issues at birth or because of circumcision necessarily means that gender is an inherent biological concept or that yes. there's a causal relationship between the two. That okay. needn't be the case. There Thank are you. social explanations Thank for you, those Vosh. presences. So Alice, I... Alice will spawn, and then I'm going to hit from Red Shroud who hasn't been able to say anything. Okay, also right. I love you very much. I have to sleep, though. Can't be careful. I, I agree with you that it doesn't necessitate um, that there is some sort of essential, you know, gender internally or whatever, that it's, it doesn't Getting necessitate creamed. that it's biological, but it also shows that it's not purely social. I don't know if you read the Moni case, um, but it was not a matter of just raising somebody who is XY um, and otherwise biologically visibly male as a woman. It's somebody who was, um, you know, given female genitalia. Um, to the extent that medical science was able to, um, as well as hormones, um, and raised as a woman. It was a total sexual, total sex change, essentially, what you would end up doing with somebody who is a trans woman uh, post-op. So it's not a matter of just a social change. That was a sex change. Um, and that didn't Which do anything like led either. to sexual dysphoria, yeah. Except that the problem is they were raised, the, 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 it was raised as a woman with the sexual parts that makes okay. someone a woman with the hormone balance that makes someone a but woman. They're, but they're, wait, but that's the that's the brain body divide right there. That's yes. the sexual dysphoria that I'm describing. Their okay. brain had an imprint, had a map for what their body was supposed to look like, and it wasn't. And that was what okay. caused the problem. Even if but you're then, raised in a given way, I mean, if there's that fundamental mismatch, this is not that, hard. that's what causes it. We have a, a seemingly intuitive rejection of bodily characteristics that our brain doesn't seem to want to be a part of us. So I don't think that necessarily d refers to any biological char biological characteristic of gender. That's just a component of the, the a sex. biological component. You just claimed a biological component. Okay, yeah, wait, wait, hold on. There's, there's this, this is something that's irritating me so much. This is, okay, this is, but it's not a gender Obviously, thing. everything... On the way to that red charlotte and then i will let you the rest in but i gotta let right. she have to talk it all uh so like i want something to alice right so i don't think except maybe vosh um 
uh, I don't think most people think, uh, both in academia and colloquially in like culture, nobody thinks that biology plays like no role in what your identity is, what your preferences are, and who you are as a person. As like anyone who knows what they're talking about, all you are is your genes expressed in an environment, right? Mm -hmm. There are some parts about you that are like uh, not predetermined, but they will uh, influence how stimuli uh, and socialization affects you, right? So like I posted some studies in chat in in, in um, text BC or whatever, um, where like uh, it's like a bunch a mixed bag of stuff like um, that socialization can change like uh, your your hormone production, that like hormone production uh, and like your hormone levels like literally affect your preferences. Uh, and this can be like measured like genetically and like biologically. Um, while it's not the whole picture, uh, obviously socialization has like a huge component to deny that there is any sort of biological component is just sort of- No um, one has ever denied no that. Uh, that's all I had to say. Okay. okay. I don't right, think- so, um... Yeah, you can respond, um, and then I'm going to Vivian, then Jack. Okay. Okay. I don't think, and I, I, I literally don't think any single person on this panel, this maybe Destiny, has claimed that that like, uh, no, actually, not even Destiny. Uh, it, that, that there's like no biological. We all recognize. Like, I think everyone here is like believes that the brain is where the mind is generated. Correct. Obviously, everything is there. But what we are trying to I believe in God. I don't know about you. Yeah, I know. Where's the Where's the gender particle? Right. Yeah. We got fifty fifty one percent female gender particles. Makes you you know. So there's something whatever. biological about gender. Is well, what you're saying, Dean? No, so something, we all but agree. wait. In the same way. In the same way that no. there's. No, it, there's something no, bio. No, wait, oh my no. God! Is is there is is like are people allergic to my voice? I'm really sorry. Maybe I, you know, uh, it's just finish, yeah. Finish your um, point, and then Vivian can jump in. What I'm trying to say is that yes, obviously there is a biological component to everything, to every part of our identity, obviously, but we don't know to what degree. And also, there are clearly some things about our identities and about who we are that are more rooted and more heavily determined by biology, by rote biology. Like this is what it is. You are your body is growing an arm that you can't change that you can't socialize your way out of an arm it's just that's how our genetics are but there are other parts of our genetics that are specifically designed to be flexible and vague and gender and identity in general is one of those things these are very very uh abstract, responsive, um, highly influenced systems. Now, to tie this back to the whole John Money thing, which I just, I really feel like people need to go re-read re that and see how unscientific and bullshit it was, how it didn't actually learn anything. They weren't able, there's no much, there's not much learning that can be pulled from it because it was so unscientific. It was so uh, bad, but- Dime Mama. Yes. Um, like, I, I also forgot to say this to Alice with the John Money thing. Um, so like, I wouldn't say that it was unscientific, the problem with it is that like it doesn't prove what Alice said it proved that gender can't be socialized into someone, right? Uh, which well, you did say that, right? Like yes, uh, because like the John Money thing is a case study. Mm -hmm. Cannot case studies are useful because they can indicate that there might be something there which we should investigate further, right? But just one case study from the 1980s won't tell you whether or not you can or cannot oh, socialize someone into a gender category because it just could have been that that one person who was just a one person sample uh, mm. was just not receptive to that Thank socialization. You. And also yeah. the fact that um, there's like a one case study from 1993 where like people, transphobes will cite all the time where one person, a single case study, they took antipsychotics and their gender's dysphoria was gone, right? I, um, yeah. So, um, I, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, your, your there's point, like so up. much that could be attributed to this John Money thing. You have an, an intersex individual who's forcibly given uh, genitalia that, that could cause a body dysmorphia issue, which could be identified because our society conflates sex and gender as gender dysphoria. However, you also have a child who, in addition to having undergone forcible um, sexual reassignment surgery, is being is having a gender Im impressed upon them. You are going to be raised as a as a female, as a woman in our society, and that means you got to do these things. Maybe by pure chance, they like the things they got to do, but they hate their body. These are different things. And like, I feel like this entire conversation is been refusing to acknowledge that these are different things that there are okay. numerous factors i think that's so, important so, to acknowledge so we'll go to vivian then we'll go to jack um and then alice if she wants to respond to anything and vosh we'll uh we'll get to you as well <laughs> go ahead right. 
I don't know why I don't know why we keep going to the John Money thing because obviously like the bodily dysphoria is going to be a massive fucking component of that. The reason I keep bringing up people who don't have like body dysphoria but still have social dysphoria is because that seems to um that seem uh that seems to imply right that even if you're socialized to believe that you're you know you should fit this this role of man within society, even if you are perfectly comfortable with having what we commonly perceive as a male body, it might be that you want to occupy a, 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 a space of like woman in society, right? Um, and and so just as there must be some sort of internal map for like what your body is supposed to look like, uh, you know, there must be some kind of internal map as to like what your gender is supposed to be and i'm not saying for a second that there isn't like that this isn't fed into by by society uh, societal factors and societal pressures like i said that multiple times but i i do think that there has to be like a biological component a biological map what i was calling a, a you know a self schema or a framework right onto which we map the uh the societal expectations um i think that that is like an inherent psychological component and i think that it can change over time i don't know whether it's in influenced by society or not i would i would imagine that it's probably not because people know their gender by like uh as young as like two years old i think in some studies right i, I imagine charlotte will have those on hand uh because she's great what do you mean by their gender sorry yeah. uh, that people can identify themselves as like boy or girl by the age of uh, of about two to four i think it is right well, they're told that they're really, really fucking early on sorry well, they're told that, aren't they? I mean, yeah. when you have a little boy, you call them a boy. Well, most people do. Little girl, you right. call them a girl. But some of them might say, actually, no, I'm a girl. Well, if you asked me when I was two, I would have had a very different answer than if you asked me when I was 18. Let, the, 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 the idea, the idea well, is that people at that I'm young, they're able to communicate. I'm not saying everybody has a good idea of their gender by that time, but I'm saying some people can have a good idea of their gender by that young, right? And I, and I think that that seems to indicate that there is some sort of like inherent thing that's that's there. I can't say for sure that it's not like socially influenced, but it's definitely it's definitely a biological component. It's definitely something that's inherent. No, wait, no, just no, one wait, quick. Wait, wait, hold on. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd love Jack, to jump in because I think Jack. I realized where we're talking past each other. Just, All right, go I'll for try it. to remember it. I'll okay. try to keep it in my head. Oh, no, no, no. You can, you can say it fine then, because uh, Jack's letting you in. Okay. I think I realized what the problem we keep having is. Okay. Can I ask an honest question? Vivian, you can answer. I don't care. Somebody who disagrees with me. Okay. Do you think that <laughs> being a fan of rugby is, um, is, is biological in some sense? That maybe there's some biological affinity for contact sports or or for the adrenaline that there, there's some something you could argue maybe there are genes associated I with um, this so many hours with, ago. with the likelihood of a person just so you all know maybe not 100 percent just so you all know you i predicted this guess. hours ago do you think that's the case okay uh the longest I, period okay. of silence I, you had i guess i guess i'll answer oh wait was that I think, vivian or i i think that it may maybe wait, did she mute like me? okay the, the brain is a really complicated thing like and and that's kind of what i'm we keep coming around like we have the we might have these like straightforward answers and the reality is if you dive into like what a lot of biologists think about like the brain or the human body the human genome is incredibly complicated it's it's mm -hmm. real real wild stuff going on over there and then you mix in hormones then you mix in neurons then you mix in all this stuff and when we talk about like a lot of these brain studies, right? And Demon Mama kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, and I interviewed Thank a you. neuroscientist the other day, so I can talk about this a little bit. You would agree he, then there's a, a biological component? Y y sure. I, right. I, I see no reason why that isn't like reasonable. Okay, if that is the case, then I believe you could argue that there is a biological component in gender in the sense that there are categories we associate with gender that have biological um, correspondences. So for example, um, an affinity for house cleaning or child rearing, as opposed to whatever it is men do, fighting bears, I don't know. Maybe there are patterns of genomes that could be associated with that. They're, they could be mapped onto that. You could make those arguments, but if that's the case, and I agree with that, by the way, that any characteristic you can associate with gender, even social ones, like wearing a dress versus wearing a suit, maybe you could find some biological root for those. And you could argue those biological roots correlate very, very heavily with sex in many cases. But I would argue those things needn't be called gender.
if we're to consider gender to be the social element of our behavioral expectations associated with sex, then we would need to distance them from the potential biological roots of being involved in those systems. So it may well be the case that even if we were to abolish gender, that people who are born XX and people who are born XY might deviate in some social ways. There still may be differences generally in how they would uh, prefer to be yep. treated or talked to or what they True, want to do. But there. my argument is that that grouping is no more descriptive and provides us no more utility than any other social grouping that you might find that might have a genealogical component. Whether that be an affinity for contact sports over pacifism, whether that be an affinity for being antisocial versus pro-social. Hell, we could make introvert and extrovert two genders, couldn't we? I mean, if you really wanted to file it down, there are genealogical components to those as well. So I don't think that gender is biological. I do think that many yep. of the things that we call gender are associated with biological influences. But if you were to get rid of gender, those influences may still remain, but we wouldn't need to categorize people by them. Does that make sense? This yes. feels semantic, but I feel like that's why we keep talking past this, each other. This is what I was trying to get at with, um, with bringing up the complexity of what we call biology. The thing is that when a lot, when people tend to say bio biologically, or when they tend to say uh, intrinsically, or or whatever um these these are like pretty essentialist terms and i think it can lead to some confusion right like i think that at the end of the day all things are biological humans are machines with a brain in them <clears throat> obviously our thoughts are generated by organic machine but that doesn't necessarily mean that when we refer to them as biological you know it's the same thing like we would say like your biological predisposition towards heart disease or something like that there are different levels of of complexity to these biological traits and what that was what i was maybe failing at at trying to communicate was the idea that like hey like we can say yes all things are bio biological just like being a fan of of chocolate chip cookies or rugby is technically biological on some level but it's not how we use that's not what we usually mean when we're talking about biological when we say something is biological or predetermined that's pretty stringent that's saying like this is a thing and then we end up in you know if you take that Further, you end up in the Jordan Peterson area of like, well, feminine essen essentials make you like these things, and I think we don't want to. We don't want to get there, right? So, um, so I, I right. just want to interject a little bit um, in, in that, like, yeah, the brain's super complicated. We take brain scans, but really approach all of those studies with a whole lot of skepticism because generally we don't have like we're the, just goofing um, around like the resolution that we would need to actually come to reasonable conclusions. We can just be like, oh, that section of the brain, it lit up and that correlates to something. And then we jump to conclusions about it. That That's basically the state of neuroscience right now. You could argue um, everything is biological, right? I mean, even people yes. who like StarCraft exactly. may have, exactly. uh, right, may some affinities, which are, yeah, right, yeah. right. Look, 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 gender, gender probably isn't like, oh, there's a gender gene, right? Like it, it's probably way more complicated than that. The same yeah. way, like, Hey, you know, there's no weeb gene, but you know, uh, we got a lot of weebs running around. Okay, exactly. Um, we need to yes. so this is what I was trying to get at. Yes, because are, gender, no, gender, gender, it is more helpful. Point. It is more useful, in my opinion, to consider gender, the concept of gender, how we interact with on a social level, and say, listen, we really don't have the evidence to to understand this from a perspective of biology. We don't. We just do not. We do not. Ha have it as the, like it makes no sense for us to go forward and 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 argue for whether it's policy or philosophy or whatever with the understanding of gender as some kind of biology well yeah sure probably in the same way that maybe someday in the future you will be able to use like 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 mag what was the fucking name professor x you'll be able to put on a hat and identify all of the chocolate chip cookie lovers on the planet instantly by some certain you know categorization in their brain we are not even close to that and maybe someday if we get there, we can have a different discussion. But for now, I think it is most useful for us to recognize that gender is super, super messy. And it's most useful to us if we use gender to talk about social stuff. And if we use sex to talk about things that are really actually right. relevant to the, the chromosomes you have. That's what I've been trying to talk about this entire time. And, and right. critically, it means that you no longer refute the gender abolitionist talking point. Because if you say that all human behavior is biologically rooted, which, I mean, sure, there's always some element of that to varying extents, then nobody would get rid... Nobody would say, for example, that um, we society needs the existence of the gamer-weeb dichotomy or the 
PC gamer versus mobile gamer dichotomy. You could maybe argue that genetically there are some traits that associate with ticket tap and little Skinner box games in your phone as compared to playing something substantive and cool on your computer. Um, you know, and but nobody would say like society needs these. If we get rid of the binary between gamer on PC and mobile, then so, that we don't know what to do. I think that's fairly ridiculous. So, well, so the right. biological association there is incidental. So I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody disagrees. So, sorry, Prime. Did you want somebody else to go? Uh, I wanted to uh, get Red Charlotte in because she seemed to want to say something, and then I want to get to you and Vivian. All right. Uh, uh, it, it was basically a point that, like, right before, uh, like, Vosh said it, I was gonna say it. The whole like, uh, literally, the it's kind of vacuous to try and talk about whether or not something has a biological or a social component. E everything a human does, everything you are, is genes expressed in environment. That's it. Every single thing. All that matters is determining Thank you. what percentage Thank you. like is contributing to it. All right. That's like all that matters. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh please Viv. Fuck. I was too nice to Charlotte. Fuck. Okay. It'll come to you, I'm sure. Yeah, but I, 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 so oh yeah. So shit. Vosh said earlier um something about like, you know, it allows people to express who they are um and demon mummy is something about us uh, like a similar um uh phrase right which was like um uh, it basically self-expression right but it's uh, like that thing that is so the much. self right that is that is what you Thank are you so expressing much, like i i don't think that that can be like massively fucking changed by society i don't have any fucking evidence for that but i do think um that we need to stop thinking about like uh whether or not like gender maps onto sex or anything like that i do think that there's a really really strong argument to be made that that like the the gender identity that somebody feels attracted to that that is like not only like a part of them but like an actual sexual characteristic it maps onto i think the uh, the bimodal model of sex in that it says uh, you know the majority of people on one side uh who are um express what we would say are male characteristics will have a male gender identity and vice versa right and if that is the case uh, then this this particular attribute seems to be strongly correlated to sex um it may it may move about like we say with the bimodal distribution or whatever but that also means that like you know uh trans people for example would be intersexed because they would have uh a a secondary sexual characteristic that doesn't map onto what we would expect from the bimodal model of sex and i think that's it's a much more useful way to think of it like that and it also kind of defeats the uh the the pure gender abolitionist stance not the gender abolitionist stance of like we should deconstruct these social categories uh until they're sort of like not as restrictive you, and everybody can kind so of much. do what they want but the total gender abolitionist so stance of like we just need to get rid of gender entirely and nobody ever even really refers to it yeah, you because i think lot, that people no matter what are always going to have this component that this gender identity component that they attempt to uh, communicate and express and will essentially create new models of gender out of them. And they well, should do it on their own terms. Right. Gender cannot yeah, exist sure. without gender roles, unfortunately. There's no way to say these are groups of people without making prescriptive statements about what those people ought to be. Yeah. Sometimes it's relatively harmless, gamers, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to gender stuff and the associations there, that can be pretty destructive. The main problem that I have with gender isn't its descriptive utility. It's just the fact that it really, really sucks to be born a given way and to be told what you ought be because of that. I don't know if there's a way to get rid of that without getting rid of the concept entirely. Letting people be wild and anarchistic in the way they form their own identities. And hell, maybe it ends up being the case that in a gender abolished world, 90% of XX people end up living their lives pretty similarly to the way they do now and vice versa mm -hmm. and what have you. But even if that's the case, I would rather have those be the products of choices they made than something they had to go along with in order to not be bullied in middle school. But you know? we would naturally try to categorize them, right? And they would naturally want to categorize themselves in order that they can advocate for, you know, uh, better resources to do the things that they want to do in their lives or what have you, right? Like I should be able, I, I want to do this, blah, blah, blah. They're going to categorize themselves and it's going to be a gender category, even and if it is determined right? by the group itself, which we is can so, but, but like, do you not think that there are some categories that 
because this whole conversation we'd be talking about oh this category has to have like content in it or like like actual substance but like there are some categories of people that are literally they are circular the group of people whose favorite color is blue what is what is the trait that makes them in that in that category their favorite color is blue it would be the mm -hmm. same thing with oh what are you a woman right what defines woman you identify as a woman that act of performance of identifying expressing your identity makes mm -hmm. you a woman and like that would be all oh, that you need what yeah, would be wrong with that there's another key difference too which is that if you get rid of gender as a concept you 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 dissociate it from the biological right now the real problem is people are born a given way and then you say oh because of this you must do this you must be this but if the way people form their gender identities is like they're like nine and they're like yeah i think i kind of like beating kids up in the playground really fucking walloping them you know if that's the case okay you know sure maybe maybe that's boy like as we know it but it, it, at least in that case there's a there's an element of autonomy there and i think that goes a long way towards lessening the otherwise harmful components of gender as we know them today i mean i like i'm i'm the only cis person here i've struggled no, with I, gender I, I, expectations I, 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 less than anyone else here <laughs> right and even i chafed at them pretty often the idea that like um Boys this is can't cry. That's what I was saying. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. And this is oh, something I've been trying that, to that, get that, at this point. Ah, the Jack and then uh, Alice and then right, Demon. And then you tell everyone what you got. We're trying to say. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, so, so basically, just this idea that, like, I, I think a lot of people, when they talk about gender abolition, they scare people who are gender essentialism, like, really attached to their gender in like a, you know, they, they've built their entire identities around gender. They like gender. They like, damn, this was a wild ride. It. And I think that like maybe a better way of framing gender abolition as a concept is to minim is, is minimizing the damage that prescriptive notions of gender can have on society. Um, and, you know, the the end state of that, you know, 5,000 years in the future might be that, like, gender abolition has occurred. What that might look like, we have no idea. We can't even wrap our heads around what gender would look like if we had, like, sexy robot bodies, okay? Like, the, the idea that we know what a gender abolition society would look like, I, I think, is maybe a bit presumptuous. But I think we can all wrap our heads around the idea of what a... A society that minimizes prescriptivist <sighs> notions of gender would look like. Yeah. Even if you kept the categories, just changing the way you reach those categories would be much better. Imagine if, like, what is being a woman? I don't know. Imagine in your head, whatever that is, you know? Imagine it's the future, okay? You're not that's not called being a woman, okay? That's called being a gay lord. That's what that's called now. That's the category name, all right? And you know what? You're not born with those expectations, all right? You're like eleven years old, you're in middle school, and you're like, you know what? I like yeah, pink true and I like bad music. I'm sorry, that's not fair. And I like music different from my tastes. I'm a gay lord now, okay? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that identity, I mean, they can still build their life around that if they want to. Fuck, go, Godspeed, please, more of them. But okay, um, maybe, maybe gamers still exist. Maybe, hey, maybe the gamer gender still exists, you know? <laughs> I just, it just seems nice to me. I don't know. And maybe, and I, I worry a little bit too, because, you know, I'm going to have a kid one day, maybe in this economy. And um, the, the idea of like them growing up and because I want to do the both ways thing, you know, like if they're born, let's say they're born like cis boy or whatever. And I'm like, uh, the whole Sweden, like gender neutral child raising thing seems like it might cause a lot of, a lot of grief for kids, like sure. schoolyard grief, you know, with socializing. So I don't want to do that. But also, what am I going to do? Like, hey, you know, hey, son, by the way, if you have a problem with that, please let me know at any point in time. I'll drop that terminology if that's what you prefer. It's. It's just, uh, it'd just be cool to get rid of that, um, you okay. know. Alice, 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 Alice. Alice. Uh, so all, all, all kind of my, my curiosity here is, first off, um, uh, so, so Vosh, um, you mentioned like that, you know, you, 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 you've, you've chafed at gender roles. So have all of us, obviously, and we haven't escaped them. Uh, we're still being uh, ascribed, you know, gender expectations. And I guess um, Demon Mama pointed out, like, some people like, some of these gendered expectations being in a, a society that is post-gender doesn't mean you can't like the things that you might associate right now Thank to you. gender and that's Thank okay you. i can like the th some of the things that came with you know being a man or being a woman i can like some of those things in a post-gender society and that's okay um it's uh, it's not an exclusive thing it's not a oh post-gender no longer can you like wearing dresses if you're female you can't do that anymore because that's gendered that's not how it works so um 
I, I guess that that kind of I was like one little bit of confusion for me is like post gender doesn't mean that you suddenly stop being able to express femininity or masculinity right. as as they exist. It's just that it changes a little bit about it, and it's not something prescribed to you now. Now it's not. Oh well, you can't cry because you're Thank a boy. You. Now Thank it's you. like, oh, you you like the principles of stoicism. That's based. So like, um, not that that stops you from crying, um, but you, you get the that idea. Was a well, I mean, yeah, you don't want to express it. Yeah, anyway, yes. Um, you get the idea, though, that like post-gender societies don't suddenly stop letting people express themselves in these ways that we associate to genders. It just stops prescribing or forcing them into yes. those ways. Yes. I am ascribed things because I pass as a woman. I don't want to be ascribed the things that are associated to women. I don't mind being able to do some of these things. And I like the positives can be good. But there's like lots of I, I'm not a woman or a man or a trans person. I'm I'm Alice. I'm an can individual I, person, I and I have my own like set of traits that match me the best. And they're amalgamations of all the different things that that you know make up me. It's not gendered, um, and I don't have to make them gendered. I could, if you know. Yeah, and to build off of what you're saying there, because I I agree with you very strongly on this point. Um, to build off of that, like something that I brought up before is that like I think there's at least in my experience of life and in everything that I have researched, there seems to be quite a lot of evidence that people really want to be able to express themselves more freely than our current gendered society allows us to. And that is the uh, reason why I challenge gender so much. I think that like, yeah, if you really identify strongly with the term woman, sure, keep using it. I'm sure there'll be like a hundred different terms in the future, but I would really like to see a society where people can realize themselves better. And we have, we are so far away from that right now. Right now it is so stringent. And like, like I said, there's a lot of agony that happens even to people who aren't trans people who are ostensibly cis they are totally comfortable identifying as cis but they don't feel like they can express themselves in certain ways because that would go against our society's crappy understanding of gender so uh yeah like we we went a lot of places in this conversation which i'm really kind of actually happy with it was really mm -hmm. uh, you know a brain stretcher in a lot of ways and that's great but um at the end of the day what i think you know my I want to make my position clear is that like i think there's a lot of people who are suffering under our current uh like model of gender and i think that the one i'm arguing for the gender ascensionist position would be so much better so much more freeing even if someday 500 years from now we have a totally different understanding and we're like wait a minute gender was such a stupid concept like it's not even like that it's like you have spots on your brain and if they link it a certain way and we have like this crazy understanding of how things are un understood that'd be fucking cool or whatever but yeah. for now i think it would be better if we moved away from the model of gender is an essential biological trait that you uh, are born with liking pink dresses and we move to a thing where hey you can be who you want to be and you can express that however you feel that and we should give each other the uh daily respect the the basic level of respect that we allow each other to have those identities and not like kill people over it because that's what we do right now yeah so, i mean let, let, let's be let's be gender pirates together you know sailing the high seas of gender taking the booty that we want leaving the booty that we don't want it'll be great uh, go ahead uh, vivian yeah so you're still linking like the social things onto the onto the like internal components of gender or whatever just like saying well gender is just like liking pink dresses or whatever and i don't think that it necessarily is but this whole conversation yeah they are part of gender but they are not they're not all that makes up gender they're the sociological expectations placed on genders um anyway um, but this whole conversation started from like the whole like uh, trans women are women or uh, a a woman is whoever says they are a woman or a woman who is is whoever identifies as a woman right and it's total uh, uh, whether it's tautological whether it's a useful statement I did it again to everybody and made as, a night of content as, for as interesting as this this all is and it is interesting to try and work out like you know where exactly gender comes from etc uh, and whether or not like uh we should abolish gender what that even looks like all very interesting intellectual conversations and i don't think anybody is arguing that we shouldn't try and deconstruct these categories mm -hmm. don't worry, like, as much afterwards. as possible in order to free people from those gendered mm -hmm. expectations that are harmful to them such as boys don't cry or uh girls have to like cook and clean or, or whatever yep, more um, that's right but in the you know it it does 
in the in the present day there are people who are fighting really 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 fucking hard to be recognized as one of these genders right uh whose lives depend on their ability to get the state and society uh to acknowledge them as either woman or man um that's the only way they're going to be able to get their medical treatment that they need in order to be able to transition that's the only yes, way I that they're going to get treated properly in society Never like, get a job and be treated well uh, and not be driven to depression and and poverty um and so while while we can talk about utopian visions of gender of gender abolition i think it's um I, I think it's pertinent to sort of remember those people who are fighting for that today and just try and um because they're not going to be on board with a complete gender abolition project uh while in the meantime it's like well no actually i am a woman i don't want to deconstruct the category of woman i want to be a woman so that i can get the things that i need you know i don't well, know, gender I abolitionism think, I, doesn't mean denying well, Right. People I, I, know, today. I know that. I know I, that. But it's I, when you start sort of disparaging some of the slogans that are used to com uh, to communicate these concepts that, like, I should be treated as a woman in the society in which we currently live, right? Well, what which slogans is are getting... what trans women are women, or a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman, means it is a slogan that's trying to communicate this concept, oh. this plea to well, society. So, I don't yeah, know. Can I comment on what they have a like, problem with that? I love this. I yeah, thought we were on that. board with the trans women or women. Here, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just going to step in real quick. This is why I think it's more useful to frame it as eliminating the prescriptivist notions of what gender should be in society. I think that's a more useful explanation of your goals as a gender abolitionist, because let's be real, none of us are going to live to see any kind of utopian vision of like complete uh, gender abolition. That's what you, that's what you think. <laughs> Okay, okay, look, maybe maybe, maybe one of us. Yeah, one of us has been born that will get the sexy robot body first. Now who's okay. here, who here is youngest? You have the best odds. <laughs> Wait, who here is a gamer? You're exposed to less sun. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, one uh, thing I wanted to ask uh, uh, Vivian, just as a clarifying question to this point, um, like... I, I don't really think that there's been a whole lot of, like, um, critiquing of, like, slogans and stuff. And I usually don't personally have much of an issue. Um, but, like, w when we're talking about philosophy versus, like, um, pragmatic um, or, hmm. or whatever, like, I do think there is a little bit of a difference there. I mean, for example, I think sure. most trans people here and probably even Vosh would be familiar with this history. Like, I mean, for a long time, the go-to political line was uh, trans people are born into the wrong body. And that was because that made sense to the largely heavily spiritual America at the time that is, you know, we don't really believe yeah. in that kind of stuff anymore as much. Um, but I think that like those those sort of like pragmatic optical sloganeering decisions, whatever, is like is not it's not quite the same discussion. There are times like I, for example, think that the model that I propose is super useful because it allows and, and obviously I'm biased to my own fucking thing that I'm coming up with that I've been arguing about for the last like fucking two months. But um like this i think this position works because it allows it allows accepting people who are fighting right now for the rights that they deserve and it validates their gender while still saying hey we have a longer term project that we're working towards which is acknowledging that gender is kind of bad and if we if we just stopped at making this very specific type of binary trans woman okay in society well there's going to be a lot of people who are left out by that and well, i would hope that we can push further i've been trying to work work out why I was so uncomfortable uh, with the with the toxicity and so on that uh, surrounded your debate with um, RGR uh, and some of the language that was used by both of you in that debate. Um, I can't think of specific examples from you, but I can think of one from RGR, right? Uh, RGR came in and said, I don't agree with self-ID. And that like that statement in and of itself is like incredibly fucking alarming to anybody who's fighting for the right to self-identification over in Europe. Now, this isn't what rgr meant by it right she didn't say i'm opposed to the idea that like trans people should be legally it's recognized okay. as okay. the gender okay. they say they are like that's not the that's not the argument that she was making but i think that 
when we have these really, really complicated philosophical discussions uh, on, a, on a public platform, um, we end up stumbling into things that are uh, things that are easily misconstrued, things that bring up conversations that the general public just isn't ready to have at the moment, and could in fact be damaging to uh, current movements that are trying to gain some kind of incremental change. Maybe. You know? I mean, I do think there's some validity to that to a certain degree, but like, mm, like I think that like it's mostly overblown. I mean, for example, let's just be completely frank. Uh, like I, I'm totally fine with bro broaching this subject, but somebody who came on here earlier and argued with me and then fucking chickened out and ran away. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, but no, he came on. I mean, he had a whole lot to say about how I'm damaging the trans movement and I'm damaging mm -hmm. women online. Come on, like this is ridiculous. That I think I listen. Maybe I maybe I think too highly of audiences. Maybe I think that the people. Maybe my audience is just super hella smart and I'm misjudging the rest of the internet. But I think that we can. I think that people can handle these types of discussions. I'm very much yeah, a believer that the average person can parse these things and i think that when it gets really bloody and bad is usually the result of totally unpredictable interactions with like people's like super parasocial followings who you know more or less kiss the ground that people work on yes, so, yeah. that sort of thing parasocial followings are a real fucking problem I, 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 yeah the problem I with the demon to... mama I, 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 I just want to say the problem with the whole show demon show are the uh, not Josh's Destiny's show immediately afterwards and I said you know we need to have some kind of fucking empathy in these discussions this is a really complicated discussion people are going to fuck up all over the place um, and you know that we probably need to like tone down some of the rhetoric that we're using against individuals and so on right that was pretty much my my point um, and that goes for like all of these fucking like crazy complicated discussions you know um, yeah, and the problem with that debate wasn't the idea of being discussed. That's for sure. I mean, Sorry? I would generally the agree. problem with the Demon Mama RGR thing wasn't the ideas being discussed. That wasn't where the toxicity arose from. It had a lot more to do with misunderstandings, miscommunications, and for other communities getting involved. I don't think it was the actual ideas. I mean, if we want to talk about potentially damaging the discourse, you know, how you phrase these ideas is super important, but. To be fair, and, and I, I like her, I do, but to be fair, RGR going with the I don't believe in the self-identification route, that line of thinking, if poorly expressed, which I think to an extent it was in that conversation, actually is pretty damaging to hmm. trans advocacy because that is the predominant line, you know, argumentation wise. So I don't I, I think that ideologically there's plenty to be discussed here, but these conversations are like absolutely have to be had, you know. Yeah, so like I, I think it was was it in the newest um was it the newest contra video or the newest uh like um Abigail video where they said um there's like a problem with the phrase like the advocacy phrase like as a slogan, trans women are women because it begs the question, right? But the thing is, like in practice, it, 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 log it logically does, right? It technically begs the question, but in like yeah. real life, right? It 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 doesn't beg the question in an actual conversation often enough to matter. It's a good yeah. slogan, and it, yeah. it's work. It's been working, and it, and, it, and, and, it works. and we shouldn't be attacking that slogan in a, on a public platform when it's like one of the few things we actually have that is pushing trans advocacy forward, oh, especially. Yeah. You know, in a country like mine, where we've just lost fucking like puberty blockers for under 16s, there's, uh, you know, we couldn't pass a, a, a um, conversion therapy bill because uh, because trans people were going to be included in it. And, and all that sort of stuff. So, and, and, and for the record, I agree with you. I don't attack these people. slogans. I sometimes would maybe perhaps encourage somebody to um, maybe maybe we could do better. Like, for example, I would probably very gently encourage someone to move away from language like uh, born in the wrong body. But I, but this is not that is not my approach. My, I have my own approach, but I don't stop those. I recognize the pragmatic value and always have. Um, and also just just a comment just because I you know it, it was concerning me. Yes, I by the way, I largely agree with you, um, Vosh, about like the, the prescription of what happened there. Um the the real the, the conversation was like a spicy debate that we like both had some moments where we got worked up. It was nine hours into a stream and also whatever. But like what happened after was not anything like that. That was a there was a whole yeah. bunch of that information was, left out. Was, People got involved. Yeah. And yeah, it was but, pretty but, bad. But so. The catalyst was this incredibly like complicated discussion, which is a very similar discussion to the one we, we've just been having. And I don't think that anybody can say it's not a complicated discussion, given like how much contention and how many different points of view have been presented on this panel, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I think like uh, just as a point of 
like everybody always talks about fucking optics and so on right uh it really does depend on what you're trying to do um and the and the kinds of discussions that you platform are like you can predict that they're gonna go a certain way you might not predict that it's gonna go as bad as like but you didn't you say like you you were like i don't want to have this discussion right now right like i i i honestly don't know yep. That's, yeah, I nobody talked know about that. that or even the one we just had is one that's like useful to be having like uh, in public at the moment. So I, I don't want to have like a much of a meta debate of, of an O debate here. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, okay, uh, is there anything else that, uh, people would like to say on this? I mean, uh, now that we have these interesting people gathered here, um, uh, Jack. First off, I want to clarify that my audience is free to kiss, kiss the ground that I walk on. Okay, that one hundred percent. Feel free to do that. I'll think you're weird, but, you know, free country and all that. Um, and second off, I, I think that it is good I prefer to donos. link this conversation back into, like, the actual material conditions of trans people. And I, I thank you for bringing us back around, Vivian. I appreciate that. Because it, it is, like, it's a complicated topic. Like, what what are, what are what is the philosophy of gender, okay? Like, that's a complicated topic that I don't think any of us here, Coggering except background. maybe Joe, who left, would be qualified to answer. Um, and what we what we are qualified to answer, though, is what like material needs trans people have in the relative places that we're located in. And I think that you know, using this kind of a conversation to get people thinking about interesting ideas, or at least different ideas, and you know, thinking about trans people and how how our lives are, because mm. frankly, it's real fucking hard to be a trans person, uh, and it's real fucking hard to transition. And you know what I would do? You think would be useful? Um, is 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 something I try to do because I talk about cults and shit all the time, right? I want to get experts in the subject and to like try and bring some expertise to the conversations that we have, like in these spaces around like de-radicalization and so on. Um, and I think what would be really, really useful. You mentioned like Joe, you know, has has a decent amount of education in this area. I think it would be useful, um, you know, when these kinds of things do crop up. I'm not saying that people who don't have training in the area can't talk Thank about these things. Thank you so much, Pipto Cakes. Thank you um, so much. But I think it would be useful rather than sort of like blundering around in the dark and trying to work out concepts that perhaps people who have more experience in the field have already grappled with and may have better perspectives on. Um, I think, you know, we uh, among us all here, we have some pretty large collective Sus. platforms and we can among leverage those to, to, to reach out to experts in these subjects and maybe try and bring some some more expertise in the, uh, in, in the subjects we talk about into the conversations that we have. Absolutely. And like that, that's part of what's so valuable about these conversations is it gets us thinking about these things too. It motivates mm -hmm. us to talk about material conditions of trans people because I know like on my pro on my stream, like I'm not talking about trans issues 24 seven and um, like oh, hey, maybe, I <laughs> maybe I should uh, uh, talk about trans issues more. Maybe I, maybe I can figure out more experts to bring on. Um, <laughs> Well, I just, I can I, I just want to say one thing to, I will interrupt the positivity circle jerk here. The thing Go that frustrates it. me is I feel like 98% of the time when leftists talk about, um, like what it, what it means to be a woman or what gender means, we're talking about these highly academic esoteric ideas that are, by the way, you can talk to academics all you want. They're debating it too. When you're not going to find a concrete answer by talking to a PhD in gender studies, they're also furiously fighting with one another. And we talk about that instead of what I think is the more prescient issue here, which is how do we convince other people that trans people aren't literal degenerates? Um, that would be preferable in my mind. But that conversation has a lot more to do with rhetoric, optics, and presentation than it does with the actual... I mean, the underlying stuff is fun. I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about it at all. It's just... Mm -hmm. yeah, I, like, I don't know. I'll, I'll say this much, okay? Um, I feel like screaming trans women or women uh, out of a bullhorn somewhere in a street corner in a major metropolitan area will probably convince more people than if we were to get the population of a city to have watched this panel. Just because yeah. the conversations we were having had very little to do with convincing other people. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, I do like... agree. 
I do agree there's some esoterism to it, but at the same time, in conversations like this, and, and this is just why I do panels a lot, and this is why I do the stuff that I do, people's brains stick to this stuff, and they like coming along with us on our little brain journeys, and it lets them practice those yeah. mental paths um, in a way that, like, as if they were on this panel too, and it lets them get lots of ideas through their brain in a way that's useful, even if sometimes they're esoteric. And I will agree, this isn't like... I don't think that panels are like, we are marching forward towards the the edge of trans liberation. Like, no, no, no. But I do yeah. think there's probably, I mean, I know I've benefited personally from stuff like this where it's like, oh, wow, I had never walked down this path. And I, now I've walked down eight different paths. And I've also got the benefit of seeing which one won out and for what reason. So I think that's kind of valuable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, yeah this, 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 this does um, Changing minds is also one that we need to, like, maybe move away from ever so slightly it's not that changing minds isn't useful of course it's useful but it ignores the fact that we have an extraordinarily large base of people who uh who if not completely agree with us at least identify with our struggle and want to support us in it um and That's i true. think that a lot of energy that goes towards trying to form arguments that are going to convince bigots uh could instead go to and be put to much better use uh, in in trying to form broader coalitions between marginalized groups in order to collectively fight for each group's rights. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure, I mean, absolutely. you got to do both, but it, unfortunately, it's like... Yeah. It's more effective to reach out to people who don't really have an idea of what trans people are or mm. are, you know, rudimentary levels of bigoted, uh, <laughs> simply because they've never encountered a trans person before. Yeah, so, like, yeah, I yeah. live in the middle oh, of the Midwest, yeah, and most people I encounter never met a trans person. They barely mm. know what a trans person is. Mm -hmm. They think a trans person is somebody on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, no, so you're, you're right. right. You're making, uh, making the decision right. between ignorance and, like, um, uh, like malice, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, Bosch, but... say something? Oh, well, just there are a lot. I mean, it depends on which groups you find yourself in. If you're if you're like in a largely progressive space, then I agree, you know, focus on uh, presenting these ideas in a friendly and approachable way, get people together, try to find ways to get them politically organized. But in some communities, I mean, especially some of the ones I bump into, man, the conversations are less, you know, what can we do to support trans women and are more? No, actually, being trans doesn't make you a pedophile. No, wait, hold on. No, okay, let's back up 18 steps. Do you know what gender means? And, like, that's, that's. I feel like an unfortunate number of Americans are on that level. I mean, I think if you ask your average Midwestern boomer whether or not um, there is a biological reason that women wear dresses and men wear suits, I actually think many of them would short circuit. Because I've done this to some of these people, and they just freeze up. It's incredible. But anyway, okay, so plurality of approaches, it's all very important. Let's just, infighting is probably bad. We can all agree uh, on, that infighting should be avoided, on, especially when we're all in agreement enough to even have these conversations. But if we did infight, but, I would win. So uh, early in this conversation... We have uh, that base. We have we, the, so you want to convince people over to our side, but what is the point of people being on our side if they just sort of like generally agree with us and they'll probably vote vaguely in the direction of us, right? It We... We are still, I mean, in the United Kingdom, for example, uh, the majority of women uh, agree that we should institute policies that benefit trans women, right? We, we already have a majority of people who agree with us, and yet the law is going against us. And the law is going against us because the opposition, although a minority, is galvanized. It has coalesced, and they are vocal, and they are fighting. Whereas, like, I, I think just trying to get people yeah, to sort of fight. Yeah, 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 we should fight. Are okay. like I, it, it's not it's not as I, effective I totally, I totally agree with you Viv. and i will go to you uh red uh um red red i'm sorry it's late red i'll go to you red next um but uh, um but i totally agree with you on this point oh my god vivian i love you at this point just hey one. thank you so much <laughs> piftle cakes thank you so much <laughs> but yes um uh, this uh, thank you so much constantly we get in this argument this debate right like this has been an awesome I bring, panel. i'll just bring this quickly back to defund the police though we don't have to go there um but like you know oh hey defund the police um that's like not a good slogan it's not com a convincing you know like uh billy bob thank and you fucking, uh, uh, appreciate Arkansas, you. like to jump on your side well yeah but i mean it's been it's a not, wild one it doesn't have to be the point right it could be the rally our we side we got more after to, like, don't worry cause, we're gonna chill right? after because a lot of those people aren't going to march for us anyway right and they can if they can be so easily co convinced that um uh blm right. 
is a terrorist organization from the phrase defund the police, right? Well, that guy wasn't going to be an ally. He wasn't going to be like, he was, it wasn't going to decide who he was going to vote for. He wasn't going to march with you. He wasn't going to send a letter or anything like that, right? So there's value yeah. in rallying your side. And your side. Like yeah. the allyship versus accomplices or allies versus uh, versus comrades kind of argument, right? It's so it's all very well to like give um, uh, mouth, uh, lip service to to uh, people's struggles, but what you actually want is somebody who will fucking go to a protest and get arrested with you. You know, somebody who will fucking like take down your phone number or raise bail funds for you or whatever because that genuinely is the fucking situation that a lot of marginalized groups are in that we actually need to be kicking up more of a fuss than simply saying hey could you maybe pay some attention to it? because we're actively having our rights stripped away from us i mean i mentioned the uk but in the united states is very very similar the amount of fucking like transport bills and uh trans kid bills uh puberty blocker bills and all that sort of stuff that are coming uh yeah. coming before state legislatures at the moment right um biden's pushing for some good shit don't get me wrong but at the state level it's a fucking disaster especially if you live in a red state oh for sure um I, and I'm, like I'm, I'm, oh, wait, wait, hold on, wait, please. we all agree on that though uh, so like er early in the conversations like the things Wash episode. was talking about well, the people you're like referring to are like uh fringe right people who are like even interested in those conversations to begin with when you're doing like advocacy where you're uh, canvassing, right? We we're canvassing about issues to people. These topics mm -hmm. literally never come Thank up. You, what is gender? What is a woman? None of these things ever come up. That what like uh, and we've even talked about this early in the conversation. I think like four hours ago or something. <laughs> um, that like what what changes people's minds about trans people is like one canvassing with a trans person and presenting them the facts and presenting them your suffering. That is like literally what gets people to like, um, and even when confronted with anti-trans ads, the effect uh, on their um, beliefs for the ad dissipates, but the effect of the, the conversation with the trans person persists after the conversation. And it like actually like marginally changes how people behave and view things. Um, like these, these are all things that we don't. That's even what have I've to been like, telling um, you, chat. We don't need conjecture. We have like, we literally have like empirics for this, like how to change people's minds. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can like post the chat as like a as a reference. Well, and, and also, like... uh, for a fun fact for Vivian and anyone else in this room for future reference, I just posted some stuff in chat. It's not really have to do anything with this conversation. It's about trans kids with puberty blockers, um, and how right, like yeah. uh, puberty blocking kids don't desist. Uh, that was just like a fun fact. <laughs> So, like, w one of the things is, and, and, you know, diversity of tactics, all that stuff, like, I grew up a bigot. Like, I, I grew up being bigoted against, like, trans people and being like, oh, and gay people, too. Like, I grew, I, I, I come from people who are like that, and largely, at least in my experience, and sure, that's anecdotal or whatever, um, but, like, a lot of people don't really care that much about trans people, and they don't really know what a trans person is so yeah. uh to charlotte's point like having somebody on hand who's just like a, a normal human being who happens to be trans and like going around canvassing super useful to make that issue real and to like introduce people to what a, like what even is a trans person a lot of people don't think they've ever met a trans person in their life they're wrong but yeah. like a lot of people think that and um disabusing them of that notion i think is really helpful when it comes to trans issues yeah. Yeah, same has been shown with uh, racial minorities too the people with the worst views on black and brown folk are usually not again the count uh well um if he comes back Shame. then uh well so uh, speaking Take of what um, he was just saying, uh, I just posted something in chat. This is from 2015, so it's probably increased by uh, since then. But um, like 30 percent of, of like most uh, personally know a trans person. So that's just like personally know, not just like a met someone. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people have met trans people. Yeah, I mean, like just statistically, like like what one out of every oh, no. 200 people is trans in the United States. More than so that's one out of every. Something it's, like that? I mean, it could be uh, as... Yeah, it's it 0.066, right? It, it could be as high as 1 in 50. We just don't know. Because, like, yeah. since 
this really, really shit. So, like, um, there's a variety of organizations that attempt to make estimates, and the estimates, like, from both the UK and the US are somewhere between 0.4% um, and 1.8%, depending on who you ask, right? Like, it's really... It's a really, really broad range. He's coming um, back. I think, you know, I think you're probably going to see that yeah. number climb anyway. So even if it is like 1.2% now, I think it's probably going to be like 1.5 to 1.8%, <laughs> um, you know, within a generation because the the amount of uh, trans people who are now coming out, you know. Yeah. How do you? Okay, there we go. Welcome back. Like no, no, wait, Vic, Vivian, you don't understand. They're being socially pressured to be trans. The increase uh, 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 of uh, fucking, the decrease in testosterone over the past three years is making everyone trans. I'm a really good game run, and then my computer just ups and crashes. Oh, man. The amount of people presenting to uh, gender clinics in the, in the UK has increased by some 6,000% in the last fucking, like, two, uh, 10 years or something. So yeah. it's, like, it's so huge, right? And I think, like... It went up from a pretty small number. Estimate yeah. on the actual trans population uh, at this stage, like it's going to be really difficult. I think it probably is somewhere in the range of one percent, but like it's really, really difficult to say. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and we'll all be trans. I mean, that's the goal, right? Heck yeah, uh, we'll yeah, more or less. Trans. I mean, honestly, and that's another thing that no. I did want to. <laughs> that's 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 something that I did want to touch on just a tiny bit, which is that like everyone being trans. No, no, not literally everyone being trans. <laughs> I wanted to not, talk not about until we, not until the Globo Homo get their yeah, Not until Globo Homo initiative is prepared. Yeah, the, the human instrumentality <laughs> project will be complete. Where um, my where my femboy camps at, Biden? I was promised femboy we were pro camp. Yeah, no, I that's but what, what FEMA uh, stood for. But, <laughs> But but honestly, like one of the things that I think is is valuable and part of the reason why I show up to a lot of panels and stuff like that is because uh I think there's a lot of people who need to hear that like it's actually more normal to think about your expression and your gender than people think a lot of times. Again, uh, some of this is a bit of a of a uh, unscientific uh, hunch based on my personal experience of meeting a lot of people who might identify as cis but really really want to change up the way that they uh actualize and realize and and express themselves and you should do it it's it's good actually it's and worth it it's rewarding and you don't have to live up to these totally incoherent nonsense uh prescriptive gender bullshit that people tell you even if you're not reject trans. cringe yeah exactly precisely yeah and so like i think that's like one thing that I think is valuable, even if sometimes uh, we get into most like granular uh, conversations about uh, linguistics with regard to gender and whatnot, I think there is value in at least thinking about it and getting people's brain juices flowing because I think a lot of people, I, I, there's this whole idea of, uh, God, I always think of the philosophy tube um, video about communities of strength versus communities of vulnerability. As it turns out, a lot of people, um, a lot of people actually have shared vulnerabilities, even that they don't know necessarily exist. People have a lot of shared interests and a lot of people who, you know, think they're a part of like cis heteronormative society um, aren't entirely to the same degree that they thought. And them learning that can be really fucking valuable and freeing and liberating. And also, you know, they're likely to become more aware of people who might be more targeted by society because of that. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did we do it? I think we did it. Uh, we solved gender. <laughs>